On day one, I spawned in as Vegeta. Tremble before the prince of all Saiyans. What? Only five hearts? That doesn't make sense. Isn't he supposed to be super powerful? I guess I'm gonna have to do some serious training if I want to live up to the real Vegeta's reputation. Where's an old martial master when you need him? Is that one over there? He looks like he might know some wisdom. It's me, Zozo. I'm looking for someone to train me. Are you worthy to train a Saiyan? No, I am not worthy to train a Saiyan, but I am worthy to capture one and make him fight to his doom. This is no martial arts master. He's a wicked wizard, and he's attacking me with magic. You're mine, Zozo. I've captured warriors far more capable than you. <laughs> not today, wizard. Nowhere to run. I've got to jump off this cliff to get away. Hopefully I can fly. Vegeta can fly in the show, so why not? Here goes everything. Uh-oh, I can't fly yet. Ah, I'm falling. Ah, I guess Vegeta doesn't take fall damage. Must be the ability I start with. It'll probably upgrade to flying later. That wizard said something about capturing Saiyans. Maybe he has some of my friends, or even Goku. But Goku isn't Vegeta's friend. He's more like a rival. Every tough guy needs a good rival, and I guess for now I'll have to settle for that wizard guy. I'll rest at the bottom of this cliff until morning. On day two, I start punching trees and rocks and get the supplies to make my wooden pickaxe. I think I'll build my base somewhere away from this cliff, since I don't want to run into the wizard again before I've gotten stronger. I'll need wide open spaces to fire my key blast, so this rocky desert will do nicely. There are some nasty coyotes here, but I'm a Saiyan. I can beat a few coyotes barehanded. Confusing me for just another helpless villager, the coyotes attacked, but I was ready. It looks like I have some buffs to my punching damage, probably from being a martial artist. That'll come in handy. Get out of here, coyotes. This is my turf. Okay, okay, we're going. You don't need to be such a jerk about it. You should have known who you were messing with. With my pickaxe, I start mining for sandstone. That will be the main material that I use when making my base. At least until I can go underground and get some more durable blocks. There are some cactus blocks here too, but I don't have any armor or weapons, so I'm just gonna leave them alone for now. If I decide later that I want green dye, then I'll be sure to start farming those cactus blocks. I end the day by building a fence around where I want the base to be and a tiny tent to sleep in. When it's done, this will be the perfect gym to train as a Super Saiyan warrior. On day three, I travel to a nearby forest to find some more wood for my fences. If there's a river I can redirect into the desert, that'll also be a good future project. Of course, I wouldn't be Vegeta if I wasn't also looking for a fight. Saiyans get stronger the more they battle tough enemies after all. That giant tarantula should make for a worthy opponent. Spiders give me the creeps, but Vegeta isn't afraid of anything. Let's go, tarantula. I started punching and doing some damage, but I was also losing too many hearts too quickly. Oh no, he's biting me. Gotta run. Didn't think a spider would be giving me so much trouble. But is it really fair that he has six more arms than me? While I was escaping from the tarantula, I found that there was an entire monkey caught in its web. Monkeys are like distant cousins to Saiyans, so of course I have to help him. I punch away the webs and set that monkey free. Be free, monkey! Oh, I guess he has something to say. What's up, new monkey friend? Thank you for releasing me. My name is Stu, and I was chased here by an evil wizard. I'm Zozo. I've seen that wizard too. Why was he after you? He thought I was a Saiyan, so he tried to kidnap me. Well, you're safe now. Why don't you come back to my base with me? Sure, but only if you've got bananas. Stu the monkey is bananas about bananas. On days four to five, I made the fence surrounding my base bigger in order to make space to build a house for Stu. Full of bananas, obviously. Yeah, baby. Stu loves bananas. That should keep him entertained, while the real Saiyan focuses on important things, like getting so strong that I can totally send that wizard flying into space when I next see him. The problem is, a bigger base meant that I was much closer to the cactus blocks, and the cactoids were starting to become aggressive. And I don't have enough buckets of water to tame them off. Back off, you greedy cactoids! The fence can keep the little ones out, but when night comes, the local cactiron is going to transform and attack me. Those guys are no joke, and they attack at night when the sun can't make me stronger. Or is it just Goku that powers up with the sun? Either way, those creepy cactus creatures have the advantage, unless I take my arsenal up a notch. I have until night falls to craft a weapon from the materials I've mined. Nobody wants to fight a cack tyrant barehanded after all. Damage buffs or not. There's plenty of stone around, so I use some stone blocks and a stick to make a stone sword and some tools. I wait until it gets dark, and then I go out and face the cack tyrant. I defeat him, using my new weapon. He drops boots of swiftness. Wow, that's unexpected. Now I can run around at high speeds with the best of them. 
Bet that evil wizard would never see this coming. Woohoo! If only I knew where I was going. On day six to eight, I'm deep in the desert gathering up sand to craft some pockets of sand. Vegeta doesn't always fight fair, so I want to be able to throw sand at my enemies, and I might need to, because here comes that evil wizard from earlier, and it looks like he's riding on a go-kart. There you are, Saiyan. This time you won't get away. You'll never capture the Prince of Saiyans. But the scary thing is, he actually might. No matter how fast I try to run with my boots of swiftness, it's like he's always catching up to me. <laughs> I told you there'd be no escape this time. That vehicle is really fast, so I have to lead him to the cactus patch where he has to drive more carefully. You think some puny cactuses will stop me, Zozo? The plural is cacti, actually, Dark Wizard. Maybe you need to go back to school. I'm evil. I don't have to get things right. I do things wrong on purpose. He throws a spell at me from long range, and now I'm taking damage. I hide behind a tall cactus, then I throw a pocket of sand at him. Yes, it looks like that threw off his steering and made him stop the go-kart. Well, I'm not going to drive when I can't see. That's just basic road safety. The effect will wear off soon, so I'm going to get out of here. Thank goodness he doesn't know about my base. On days 9 to 10, I still don't know why that wizard wants to capture me. How can I be the prince of all Saiyans when I'm afraid to fight the first guy I met in the world? Stu thinks I'm being too down on myself. Don't worry, Zozo. You're doing a lot better than I could. You saved me from that spider, and I'm sure you'll save us both from that wizard too. Well, maybe, but I think I should build a statue to get my mind off of things. Get your mind off of things like being afraid you won't defeat the dark wizard forever and all time? You're not helping me out, Stu. Sorry, sorry. Stu does believe in you, though. I think I'll build a statue of Vegeta's father, King Vegeta. That way, I can show everyone who comes to my base how powerful the Saiyan people once were. It might encourage me, too. Who knows? But this won't be just any statue. The King of Saiyans needs a huge statue made out of strong material. I better start mining stone and gathering all the materials in my base. And who knows? Maybe all this mining will help make me stronger, too. It's good exercise. I'm also going to get a source of water in the base by redirecting a nearby river. My Saiyan fists are super strong, so these blocks are like nothing to me. I also made myself a bigger place to live and constructed a house out of sandstone. And now that I have more water in the base, I can start taming the nearby cactoids with buckets of it. You nerds work for me now. On days 11 to 12, a Viking villager arrived outside my base with a story to tell. He had apparently traveled a long way seeking my base. You must be the Saiyan I've heard about. I am known as Charles, and my people are the Vikings. Days ago, I escaped from a terrible place where the dark wizard of Baraka is making all the greatest warriors in the land fight until only one remains. He continues to gather the mightiest fighters he can find and pit them against each other. Why is he doing that? Who knows? Before it was my turn to fight, I ran away as fast as I could. Now I have come to you with a warning. A Baraka will stop at nothing to capture you with a true Saiyan in his collection. He'd be able to make the battles even more violent. So that's where all the strong people are hiding? Interesting. It's strange. There was another one like you there, except he wore robes of orange. Wait, Goku is there? But he's my tough guy rival. No one gets to defeat him until I defeat him. I guess you'd better start training then. For now, I'll still avoid getting captured. But it sounds like the wizard is holding a tournament for powerful fighters. I better hope I can qualify. In the meantime, how about we get you some water, Charles? You look exhausted after all that. Thank you, Zozo. It seems you truly are the hero people say you are. On days 13 to 15, I train non-stop to make myself even stronger, because that is what a Z-Fighter does when push comes to shove. Cutting down some of the cactuses is great training for swordsmanship. I can't just rely on my fists if I want to win this thing. And I also can't let my opponent look down on the Prince of Saiyans, so I go back to that giant tarantula and challenge it to a rematch. This time, I'm armed and ready. Bring it on, you eight-legged freak! I start the fight by throwing a sand pocket, and then I run in, swinging my sword. I'm doing a lot more damage now, and my key blast is also very helpful. Not so tough now, are you, Spidey? It tries to trap me in a web, but my sword can cut straight through like it's no problem. The bigger they come, the harder they fall. This spider is toast. Whoa, I feel like my power level is rising. This is gonna be good. I've become Super Saiyan, with 15 hearts and way stronger attacks. Tremble before me. I'm the legend that all of my enemies of the Saiyans fear. I know that Vegeta can still get a lot stronger than this, but the change in appearance shows I've made some real progress towards my goal. I'm going to prove that I'm the strongest warrior in the world. Even Goku won't be able to defeat me when I'm fully leveled up. On days 16 to 19, I dig deep into the mine in search of materials. If I can get my hands on some metal, I'll be able to have better gear to match my brand new Super Saiyan form. It feels good to be a legend. The way forward is infested with skeletons, so it looks like I'll have to take them down first. Out of my way, skeletons. You're all just jealous that you don't have muscles like Vegeta. 
I guess that really struck a nerve with the leader of the Skeleton Horde. You think you can come in here and make fun of us, Zozo? We are working for the Dark Wizard, and he sent us here to capture you. Well, tell him he should have sent better. Or don't, because I'm sending you back to oblivion. The skeletons that charged me directly were easy enough to deal with, but those archers were always a pain. It's a good thing that I have Key Blast to return fire. No bones about it. You guys are done for. I take out the ones at close range and then mop up the rest. But it looks like their leader got away. He's probably going to tell the Dark Wizard that I'm a force to be reckoned with. You haven't seen the last of me, Zozo. I'll be back. Now it's time to give my armor an upgrade to full iron. While I'm at it, I'll craft an iron sword and iron pickaxe too. Iron everything. Oh, the irony. On days 20 to 22, I was surprised to see Charles the Viking return to the base. What's going on? Be careful, Zozo. Abraka somehow found out where I was, and now he's followed me here to the base. Get inside. I'll handle this. Charles went inside the base. I went to go face the Dark Wizard Abraka alone. He was waiting just outside. I'm ready for you this time, Dark Wizard. Show me what you've got. Foolish Saiyan. You are light years away from being able to defeat me. We'll see about that. I threw a sand pocket at Abraka to blind him, then followed up with a key blast shot. To my surprise, he wasn't there. He was right behind me instead. You've met the Viking, so you know why I'm here. You know about the battle to find out who's the strongest fighter in the world. I swung my iron sword at him, but he avoided it. Will you accept my challenge? Oh, so now you're giving me the choice. It's because you've grown a bit stronger, Zozo. If I fought you now, I couldn't go easy on you. Is that right? I'm not afraid. Bring it on! I threw another pocket of sand at the Dark Wizard, and this time he was blinded. I followed up with a few powerful strikes from my sword. Yeah, I really got him! Yeah, that's enough. Don't make me destroy you, Saiyan. The wizard summoned an explosive block of TNT. I ran for cover as it exploded. When I looked back over, he was gone. Was he really holding back, or just afraid of what the Prince of Saiyans could do? Either way, I would happily take him on again and find out. On days 23 to 26, I was finally able to start farming the cactoids and cactyrans for materials. And this is the fruit of my labor. No, not the prickly pears, even though they did drop a lot of those. Using the thorns that the cactyrant dropped, and with a little bit of crafting, I can make a thorn shooter. Yes. Looks like building a training center in the middle of the desert has its perks. This new thorn shooter will be my ranged weapon of choice. I don't know what kind of totally crazy warriors I'll be facing when, and if I take the dark wizard up on his challenge, but it'll be good to have some variety in my attack options. Stu thinks that thorn shooter is really cool. I'm impressed. Thanks, Stu. Let's go test out this weapon in the desert. Who knows? Maybe we'll even find some strong enemies to defeat. Me and Stu headed out to the desert and made a few targets out of sandstone. They'd be a perfect way to focus my shooting skills. Bam! Bam! Look at those targets go down. This thorn shooter is so powerful. Hey, can Stu try that thorn shooter? I've got a score to settle with another monkey back in the forest. Eh, uh, maybe I should keep it for now, Stu. I feel like things are about to get even crazier. And if you'd like to find more of my videos, you should like, subscribe, and type Z-O-Z-O -Z -O in the search bar. It never fails. On days 27 to 31, I start to add some of the more durable material to the statue of King Vegeta. I want to make sure his armor is absolutely perfect. For the blue parts of the armor, I've got to get my hands on some diamonds. But that's a really rare material, so it looks like it's time to go underground. Stu, hold down the fort while I'm away. You can count on Stu. It's not like I'll monkey around while you're away. I venture down into the underground, farther than I've ever gone before, until I am greeted by the bright light of orange lava. Somewhere in these lava caves, I should be able to find a vein of diamond. It looks like a couple of magma cubes don't appreciate me trespassing down here. If the cactus blocks damage me when I touch them, there's no way these things don't. The last thing I want is to touch any kind of magma in a place like this. Gotta put my thorn shooter skills to the test and take them out at a distance. Magma cubes always split into smaller magma cubes when they take hits, so I won't keep moving until they are completely gone. My key blast area attack helps with that. Just past the area where I fought the magma cubes... Wait, where are the diamonds? Huh? No diamonds down here. Well, then I guess I'm gonna need to find another way to get the blue for the King Vegeta statue's armor. Wait, I have a plan! If I mix sand, gravel, and some blue dye together, I can make blue concrete blocks. That'll do just fine for now. On days 32 to 35, I felt tired from all the farming and training I did, so I couldn't access my Super Saiyan form. I'll have to rest soon, but for now, I received another visit from my old nemesis, the skeleton that ran away from me in the mines. Still working for the Dark Wizard, I see. You're gonna get it now, Zozo. 
I brought the desert lord with me, and he doesn't take too kindly to some Saiyan wannabe building bases in his desert. Well, too bad. I am the Prince of Saiyans, and I don't take orders from the likes of you guys. Then I guess we'll have to fight you. The desert lord ran at me. I won't lie, he was big, and I felt a little intimidated. Thankfully, I didn't have to fight him with my sword. I was prepared for a battle, and my thorn shooter had full ammunition. Yes. Eat my thorns, desert lord. No way, you've got a thorn shooter. No fear. Let's mosey on out of here. Cowards! The skeleton and the desert lord ran away. Hopefully they won't be back again. It looks like some of the other mobs have returned as well. The gang of coyotes are back. Didn't I already teach you guys a lesson? We know, Zozo, you're very strong. But that's why we need your help. Huh? You coyotes need my help? Yes, our friend the tribal gremlin was taken by the dark wizard's second in command, the champion Colossus. He's holding him in his fortress until the dark wizard wants him to fight. He took some gremlin before he got to me? I guess I'm going to have to see this for myself. Your friend is as good as rescued. On days 36 to 39, I set off to go save the tribal gremlin from the champion Colossus. Those coyotes are going to owe me one. Whoa, is that the champion Colossus's base up there on that hill? I really need to start expanding my base if I want it to look like that. He had a pair of iron golems guarding the gate, and there were gargoyles on the rooftop. I don't know what I was expecting from the Dark Wizard's henchmen, but this guy must be really serious. I can't just fight my way in there. I'd be totally outnumbered. I'm going to need a solid plan if I want to get in there and save the coyote's friend. I made my way around the entire mountain, searching for any less guarded areas that I can sneak into. On the far side of the fortress is a tunnel, but I'll still need to avoid those gargoyles that are flying around on patrol. I guess I'll have to use a frontiersman's cap to engage stealth mode. Sorry, raccoons. Your sacrifice will not be soon forgotten. I'll need your tails to make the cap. And if I can use this to free the tribal gremlin, it'll all be worth it. But what if something even scarier is waiting for me down in the tunnel? Wait. I said earlier Vegeta isn't afraid of anything. I need to be courageous. The tribal gremlin and all the coyotes depend on me. Tomorrow, it's go time. On days 40 to 43, I'm sneaking through the fortress and avoiding detection from the mobs that the champion Colossus has been using to guard this place. I'm still not scared, obviously. But if they know I'm here, they might suspect the tribal gremlin of planning an escape and do something to hurt him. The coyotes would never let me live that one down. Using the thorn shooter, I can pick the mobs off from a distance without them ever knowing I was there. As long as I'm doing it one by one, of course. First, I take out a couple gargoyles. Then, I finish off the iron golem, guarding the entrance to the fortress's dungeon. I've gotta be careful though, because even though these guards are nothing to worry about, the champion Colossus is somewhere in this place, and he has to be almost as strong as the Dark Wizard. After a whole lot of sneaking about, I find my way to the tribal gremlin's cell. Hey, gremlin, up and at them. The coyote sent me here to rescue you. Oh, good. I was getting tired of waiting for a good fight. Let's get out of here. Huh? You say that like you could have left at any time. I've never slept in a fortress before. It was kind of cool, honestly. Well, I'm building the ultimate training gym out in the desert. If you need a better place to crash, you should stay at my base. The tribal gremlin seems sure of himself. Either way, we make tracks and find our way back to the coyotes. Thanks, Sozo. On days 44 to 49, I continue crafting more blue concrete for the statue of King Vegeta. He is going to look so regal. It'll be the centerpiece of my base when it's finally finished, but a job this big requires the help of many friends. I had Stu gather fur from the forest that I could use to line the king statue's tail. Stu can get you all the fur you need. Just don't ask whose it is. Charles, on the other hand, went to the ocean for some lapis lazuli stone. That way I had two shades of blue to work with for the armor. Blue is my favorite color. Vikings love the sea after all, and I'm no exception. While everyone else is gathering materials for the statue, the tribal gremlin and the coyotes are building a sandstone wall around the perimeter of the base. Does this look good, Zozo? Don't worry, guys. I think it looks great, no matter what anyone says. I've got a few larger rooms for training and keeping spare weapons, and I also reused some of the materials from my fences to build a pen for the tamed cactoids. Stu also came back from his last trip with something I'd never seen before. Hey, Zozo. What is it, Stu? I found a bunch of banana blocks in the forest and thought we could use them to make even more bananas. This is your wildest idea yet, Stu. But I guess having enough bananas to go around never hurt anybody. That's the spirit. Bananas to all, and to all, a banana. On days 50 to 53, the dark wizard finally reared his ugly head. And he wasn't alone. By his side were all of the henchmen I'd come to know and hate. The skeleton leader. I told you I'd be back. And now, I'm back. Again. The desert lord. He doesn't say much. And most terrifying of all, the champion Colossus. He's probably pretty upset after I managed to sneak into his fortress and save the tribal gremlin. 
I'm pretty upset that you managed to sneak into my fortress and save the tribal gremlin. Told ya. The time for your reckoning has come, Super Saiyan Zozo. I may have offered you a choice before, but now you have stolen two of my fighters away. That is unforgivable. Well, have you thought that maybe those guys didn't want to be taken prisoner? Intriguing. Now perish. I felt my power rising, and once again, I turned back into my Super Saiyan form, ready for the fight. The Dark Wizard's forces attacked the base. Everyone did their best to repel the attack, but the champion Colossus was simply unstoppable. I couldn't worry about him now, because Skeleton and Desert Lord had closed into melee range and were looking to take me down. Yeah, no match for us this time, Zozo. I drew my iron sword and took out the Desert Lord without much difficulty. The skeleton was a lot tougher, but even he couldn't withstand the power of a Super Saiyan. Speaking of Super Saiyan, I felt my power level grow once again as I buffed up to Super Saiyan Blue. I've got 30 hearts and I can fly now. How do you like me now? I was so excited that I almost didn't notice that the Dark Wizard and the Champion Colossus were retreating, and they had taken Charles with them. Charles, no! On days 54 to 57, myself and the other NPCs in the base did our best to repair the walls and training room. Nothing could repair the loss of Charles the Viking, though. We had to get our friend back. He didn't deserve to fight other warriors until the end, and he definitely didn't deserve to fight Goku before I got to. I went to the tribal gremlin, half wondering how he didn't get captured when he had already gotten taken beforehand. How can we get Charles back? It's simple. We go and save him because we want to, and we succeed because we believe we can. Huh? That doesn't sound like a real plan. The true warrior does not need plans, only the will to triumph. Okay, look, TG, I just need to know if you have any idea where this tournament of champions is being held. Fine, fine. The truest warriors know that there is a coliseum deep in the nether where only the mightiest fighters have gone. I think Braca has probably chosen that place as the location of his tournament. Nether Coliseum, got it. How do I get there? The only functioning portal to the Nether in this world was inside of the Champion Colossus's fortress. After you broke in, they most likely destroyed it so you couldn't follow them. Well, there has to be a second portal. Otherwise, how could they get back to the Nether with Charles? Think of it this way, Zozo. You could scour the entire world for that second portal, or you could be a true warrior and build one yourself. Well, I guess I do want to be a true warrior. Building another portal it is. On days 58 to 62, I finally found an underground cavern with some diamond veins. Jackpot! I know that lava caves can be dangerous, but they're perfect for finding diamonds and also the obsidian I need to make the outside of the portal. But of course, diamonds come first. I'll need a diamond pickaxe to mine those obsidian blocks, and full diamond gear wouldn't hurt either. In addition to the magma cubes from last time, there are a few other mobs deep inside the lava caves, like these fire elementals that really meant to do me harm. But now that I'm a Super Saiyan second grade, my buffs to melee attacks without a weapon are through the roof. I can punch cactuses bare hand, magma cubes bare handed, and now even the fire elementals can be defeated with just punches. After I dealt with those mobs, I got back to mining, and before too long, I had all the diamond ore that I needed to make myself a diamond pickaxe. And since I'm here, I think a newly upgraded Super Saiyan deserves some super cool diamond armor and weapons to match. That's right, I'm now decked out in full diamond armor and a diamond sword too. Next, I rerouted some of the water in my base into the lava caves, creating a field of obsidian blocks ripe for mining. I'll be ready to make that nether portal in no time. But there are a few last things I need to do before I can start my quest to finally defeat the Dark Wizard. On days 63 to 66, I take a break from building my portal to continue work on the statue of King Vegeta. Wow, it really is starting to look like him. I wonder what the real King Vegeta would say if he were to see us now. This is King Vegeta saying, subscribe to Zozo for more cool adventures like this. For the sake of all Saiyans, you should hit the red button and then the bell. On days 67 to 70, it's about time I went to the nether and settled this. I craft a flint and steel out of materials I found in the caves. Then, I gathered my obsidian blocks and arranged them into the shape of a nether portal. I used the flint and steel to light the obsidian, and boom, the nether awaits. Not too far from the other side of the portal was a giant coliseum over a huge lake of lava. 
Of course, it had to be close, since Abraka was kidnapping warriors from nearby. But I never would have found it if I wasn't in the nether. I guess me and the tribal gremlin are even now, since he gave me the hint about this place. Don't worry, Charles, I'm on my way. I made my way toward the Colosseum and found that it was guarded by a pair of zombie Spartans. No doubt the undead remains of warriors that had faced their demise in the Dark Wizard's arena. But they weren't going to stop me. Thorn shooter, go! Blam, blam, blam! With a few whacks of my diamond sword, I knocked them down for good. On days 71 to 74, I stepped into the Colosseum, only to be surrounded by a cheering crowd of skeletons in the stands. The arena itself was empty, except for another fighter who was standing not so far away from me. He looked really tough, too. Are you my next opponent? I'm Zozo, and I've come to rescue my friend Charles the Viking. I don't know who that is, but I have heard of you, Zozo. Long have I dreamed of fighting a Saiyan warrior. There's no talking you out of this, huh? Of course not. I am willing to fight any worthy opponent until the end, and that goes for you too. The Aztec warrior ran towards me and attacked. He was strong, so I took some damage. I had to play this smart, so I flew into the air and shot him with a thorn shooter a couple of times. Then I landed behind him and hit him with a punch. I drew my diamond sword, and the two of us faced off. You fight as well as the legends of your people suggest, Zozo. I don't understand. Isn't Goku here? If you wanted to fight a Saiyan, why don't you fight him? There is no Goku here. I would have remembered facing another Super Saiyan before you. But Charles said there was a guy in an orange robe. I did face such an adversary, but he was no Saiyan. If he was, I probably would have been defeated, like I have been defeated now. And with that, the Aztec warrior fell. No more time for arena battles. I had to go find Charles. On days 75 to 78, I went to the barracks below the Colosseum and found Charles down there among the prisoners. Zozo, thank goodness. I knew you'd come to rescue me. Let's go home, Charles. I've done my share of fighting in this arena, and I say we don't give the Dark Wizard any more satisfaction. We ran backwards towards the arena, but as misfortune would have it, there was an ambush waiting for us. The champion Colossus stood ready to take us on. Well, take me on anyway. Did you think I was gonna have Charles fight this guy? Get behind me, Charles. It's time for Super Saiyan Blue Zozo to show the champion Colossus who the strongest fighter in the world is. Strongest fighter in the world? Well, that would be me. This isn't the first tournament that the Dark Wizard of Baraka has held. I was the winner of the last one, and he let me go in return for becoming his eternal servant. That's a sad story, but you're no match for me. I'm stronger than any warrior here. You can't beat me. We shall see. On guard, Zozo the Saiyan. The champion Colossus was definitely the strongest enemy I had fought up until this point. But there was no way I'd let him beat me. Too much was on the line. I reached for another pocket of sand, but I was out. Oh no! The champion Colossus hit me hard and sent me flying. Literally flying, because I can fly. Is that all you've got, Zozo? Leave Zozo alone, you big jerk! Charles rushed in for a surprise attack, but it was all in vain. The champion Colossus hit him once, and he was struck down on the spot. Charles! I wouldn't let Charles throw his life away for nothing. I hit the champion Colossus with my diamond sword over and over until finally he collapsed. He was defeated. Good job, Zozo. You avenged me. Charles, you're gonna be fine. I was destined for Valhalla. The moment I was captured, you are a true warrior. It's always been you. Take care of yourself, Zozo. And with that, Charles was gone. I made my way out of the arena and back towards my nether portal. On day 79 to 84, I was still in the nether when I heard the wicked laughter of the dark wizard Abraka echo behind me. <laughs> I've finally done it. What is it now? I turned and saw the dark wizard had grown to a massive size and he was brimming with power. Holy moly, what happened to you? He cruelly stared down at me like I was an ant he was about to step on. Now that all the greatest fighters in the world have perished in my arena, I, Dark Wizard Abraka, have been able to absorb their martial arts and become master of magic and might. I am now the perfect being. You're not perfect. You're not even close. You just stole the strength of a bunch of other people. You don't deserve to have their power, especially if you had to destroy them for it. It is not for you to decide what I deserve. I have become a true warrior, and that means that all I need now is the will to triumph. Compared to that, 
What do you have, Saiyan, with that meager power you've gathered? Maybe I'll never be the strongest, but at least I know who I am. I'm Zozo, a Super Saiyan, a Z Fighter, and a truer warrior than you'll ever be. You'll be nothing once I've destroyed you for good. He stepped forward with the stolen power of all the fallen warriors. I knew I couldn't fight him just yet, so I turned and ran through my nether portal. As soon as I got to the other side, I used my diamond sword to break the portal, trapping the dark wizard in the netherworld. That should hold him for now. On days 85 to 89, I told the others at the base that Charles didn't make it back. They understood what it meant. He was in Valhalla and at peace. What mattered now was making sure that Abaraka paid dearly for all the warriors he had sacrificed to gain his dark power. Hey Zozo, Stu knows how bad you must feel about the rescue mission. So Stu decided to cheer you up by giving you a powerful new weapon. This will definitely help you defeat the Dark Wizard. Stu gave me a banana bazooka, which was many times more powerful than my thorn shooter. This would be my new ranged weapon. Thanks, too. Like Stu always says, bananas make everything better. Later on, I completed the statue of King Vegeta, finally adding the diamond blocks he deserved to his armor. Nice. I had a feeling that the Dark Wizard would be on his way soon, so I went to seek the advice of the tribal gremlin. TG, I need your help. The true warrior has finally arrived. What? I'm speaking about you, Zozo. You went down to that Colosseum and fought and returned. That means that you are now the strongest fighter in the world. You are the champion who must set things right. What can I do? Abraka still has so much power. You have power too. You just need to awaken it. There is a great waterfall behind the high cliffs. If you train there, you will be able to unlock your full potential. On days 90 to 94, I followed the tribal gremlin's advice and sought out the great waterfall. The cliffs were really steep, so I had to use my flying abilities to climb up them. It's a good thing I still don't take any damage when I fall. Thinking back, this was the place I started my journey almost 100 days ago. It was remarkable to think how much I'd done in all that time. I had made friends, won battles, and even traveled to a whole different dimension. It was crazy. There were many waterfalls around this area, but somehow my spirit could tell which one would actually unlock my full potential. I trained my skills with both my sword and my punches, and I could feel myself growing stronger by the day. This is it. I'm going to become the true warrior I was always meant to be. At one point, a few giant lizards attacked me and tried to interrupt my training, but I saw this as another test of my power, and I fought them all off. The banana bazooka that Stu gave me was an excellent weapon for dealing with enemies at a distance. Of course, my melee attacks worked just as well. I will be the one who defeats the Dark Wizard. Me, Zozo, I've got this. When I finally reached the last day of training, I knew that I was the most powerful that I had ever been. A magical halo appeared in my inventory when it was over, probably to show that I had achieved my potential. On days 95 to 97, I was at the base when the coyotes told me that they had found another portal to the nether, deep in an emerald cave across the desert. It must have been the same portal that the Dark Wizard used to take Charles back to the nether when the one in the fortress of the Colossus was destroyed. Without a doubt, the Dark Wizard would be using that portal to re-enter the world and wreak havoc. I wasn't about to let that happen though, and prepared to meet him there and settle our score. But first, I had to enchant my gear and put the finishing touches on my base. Using the diamonds and obsidian from the lava caves, I crafted a few enchanted books and gave my diamond armor the thorns enchantment. It would sacrifice durability, but in exchange, those who hit me would suffer damage. By now, I had enough green dye from the cactus blocks that I was able to make a green carpet across all the floors of the inside of the building. There were now enough bananas and prickly pears to feed an entire village, and with the help of the tribal gremlin, I was able to plant a lovely garden in the shadow of the King Vegeta statue. This place was now the perfect gym for martial artists and warriors everywhere to come and train, and I'd make sure that the world would be safe enough for them to do so. On day 98, I got some last minute training in with the tribal gremlin. As a fellow warrior, I respected everything he had done for me until now. I promise when I return, nobody will have to worry about the dark wizard ever again. Please cheer for me in the comments and let me know what character you want to see me play as next. Tomorrow would be the test of whether or not I was a true warrior, so I spent the rest of the day getting ready. It was almost time for the final battle. On day 99, I was in the Emerald Cave, standing in front of the Nether Portal, when the Dark Wizard finally stepped through. Zozo, this is a surprise. You ran from me last time. Never again. I'm going to stop you right here. If you don't want to fight, then go back to the Nether and leave us alone. What fun would that be? I need to be on this side of the portal, where weaklings like you live. That's where you're wrong, Abraka. I'm no weakling. 
I'm a true warrior, and I use my power to protect people. You will go no further! I fired the banana bazooka a few times to slow the dark wizard down. As he got closer, I drew my sword and attacked. You think you can beat me in that form? <laughs> Pathetic Saiyan. His attacks were pretty strong, but my thorn enchantment did damage back to him. Oh, clever trick, but it won't be enough. Maybe you're right, Dark Wizard. But then again, this isn't even my final form. I started up the halo and allowed the power of my potential to flow through me. My spirit awakened one last time and gave me the power to become Ultra Ego Vegeta. 100 hearts, full power. Here we go. I will not let you destroy this world. With my new Ultra Fist, I punch the Dark Wizard over and over. This is for Charles. The Dark Wizard tried to strike back, but in Ultra Ego mode, the more damage I take, the more damage my attacks dealt. No. All my power! It's being used against me! It's not your power, but this is mine! With one decisive blow, I punched the Dark Wizard into space dust! Sayonara! The battle was now over. On day 100, I found Stu training with the tribal gremlin in the gym to become a stronger fighter. I guess he really looks up to the Saiyans after all, and all that true warrior talk set a positive example. There's nothing wrong with having a martial arts student, but I guess I wasn't expecting I'd become the master at the end of my journey. I'll be on guard here at the base while I train Stu and anyone else who shows up, because after all, there will always be people like the Dark Wizard who misuse power. From here on out, I'm going to make sure that the power is in the hands of true warriors. On day one, I spawned in as Monkey D. Luffy, the rubber boy with a straw hat. Yo ho ho, I'm going to be the future king of the pirates. But it looks like I'm just a little kid for right now. At least my dreams are big. I gotta go find some good food to eat so I can grow up to be super strong. But there's nothing around this village but coconut trees. Whoa, a storm is rolling in. I better take cover. Is that a lightning bolt or a person? That's the straw hat, Zozo. I be Captain O'Kilowatt, and you've had the misfortune of washing ashore of me island. Here you will be doomed to wander the many dangerous terrains in search of me greatest buried treasure. If ye succeed within 100 days, ye may keep what ye find. But if ye fail, ye will never be allowed to leave. Buried treasure? Well, Monkey D. Luffy is a pirate, so that treasure is as good as found. Ye had better hope that you find it, or ye will never voyage on the sea again. Challenge accepted, you stormy scallywag. Good luck, Zozo. You'll need it. <laughs> Captain O'Kilowatt laughed evilly and rained down lightning on the village, so I ran for cover. He attacked several houses and even wiped out the villagers. Talk about no mercy. I have no idea how big this island is, but I'm going to scour every block of it until I find that buried treasure. The dangers ahead are completely unknown, but I will face them with a bravery suited for the future king of the pirates. On day two, I started to explore the nearby tropical forest. I have six hearts right now, so I need to stay in the least dangerous areas for right now. Who knows, maybe the buried treasure is in the easiest place to find it. That would be one crazy trick, wouldn't it? Oops, did I say this forest wasn't dangerous? What I meant to say was, it's filled with ghosts. Somehow, they kind of look familiar. Huh? Are you guys the ghosts of the villagers from back there? Yes, we are. Why couldn't you have been hit by that lightning instead of us? Just lucky, I guess? Not for long, Zozo, because we ghosts are going to haunt you. Oh no, I can't punch ghosts, and I don't have any weapons that can affect them. Uh -oh. I gotta run to safety. Ah, get away from me. All of a sudden, I saw something swoop down from above. It picked me up and carried me away from the ghosts. When I got my bearings, I saw that I was at the top of a tall tree. There was a bird with a colorful beak in front of me. Wow. Were you the one who saved me? Yes, sir. I'm Stan. Stan the Toucan. And whenever there's someone in trouble in this tropical forest, I come to the rescue. That's cool, man. I'm Zozo. Want to join my pirate crew? Sure can, man. Every great pirate needs a bird sidekick, after all. I'm looking for the buried treasure of Captain O'Kilowatt. Do you know anyone who can help? I just might. Follow me. On day three, Stan the Toucan took me to a small workshop among the trees. Wait until you meet my friend, Titus the Armorer. He makes all sorts of useful items. Sweet! An armorer could be useful to have on my pirate crew. Yes. He could make me items and gear fit for a pirate king. I looked around and saw lots of really awesome armor. Did you make these all by yourself? Sorta of kinda, my good pirate. I do the crafting, but it takes brave adventurers like yourself to gather materials for me. 
I've had loot brought to me from all the terrain on this island, and I always take what I'm given and make it into something better. Neat! I've accepted Captain O'Kilowatt's challenge, so I'll be visiting all of the terrains myself. What can you tell me about them? Well, the main ones are the Ancient Ruins, the Cloud City, and the Misty Maze. Nobody who has looked for Captain O'Kilowatt's treasure has ever found it. But there's plenty of rare items I can make for you, if you bring me back stuff from each of them. So, you're saying I should visit each of those three terrains in the next 97 days, if I want to have a chance at winning? Pretty much. I set off for the terrains without a moment's delay. Luffy never passes up a chance to adventure. He also never travels without his crew, so I took Stan the Toucan with me. On days 4 to 5, I was still in the tropical forest, so I made sure to gather wood from the trees. Once I had enough, I made my first set of tools. Yes. The wooden pickaxe will serve me well in gathering stone, but I won't be needing them for long. Because I'm going to use that stone to craft myself a set of stone tools. Alright, time to build a base for the brand new Straw Hat Pirate Crew. I laid a bunch of wood blocks for the foundation and made sure to give lots of space for all the new friends I'm going to recruit. I get the captain's quarters, of course and Stan gets a birdhouse all to himself. I too can. Believe this base is wonderful, Captain Zozo. Oh, I get it. Two can. Well, two can play that game, Stan. Very funny. But leave the puns to me, won't ya? Gotta put a kitchen in here, too. I may not have a chef on my crew yet, but I am starting to get really hungry. While I was placing down the chests, I saw a strange item fall out of a tree. Say, isn't that the gum gum fruit? It is! Not only did it fill up my hunger bar, it also made me stretch out like a crazy rubber boy, and I grew to the size of regular Luffy. I've got nine hearts now! With that much health, I'll be able to last much longer in a fight with mobs now. I'm that much closer to becoming the king of the pirates! Yo ho ho! On days six to eight, I was on my way to the ancient ruins when I saw a flock of giant penguins. How adorable! Except, they didn't seem friendly at all because they were chasing someone down. And it looks like another human. And look, they're wearing an enormous chef's hat. Well, now I gotta help. I was so mad that I started smoking and my skin turned red with anger. Now my fists are stronger than my sword. Looks like the gum gum fruit I ate earlier gives my punches extra knockback. And I'm going to need it because these penguins totally outnumber me. I need to hit them quickly and then dodge. If they surround me, I'm dinner. With a gum gum powered punch, I took down the biggest one and the others retreated. March back home, penguins. Don't mess with the future king of the pirates. You okay, chef? Thanks to you I am, but how did you know I was a chef? Just a lucky guess, based on the fact that you are wearing this slightly oversized chef's hat and a chef's apron. You got me. I am a chef. Named Skyler. I'm going to the ancient ruins to find a spice that can really cook my cooking up another notch. Wanna come with? I could really use a bodyguard. Sure. I'm headed there myself, looking for treasure. Personally, I think food is the greatest treasure of all. I like both treasure and food, for different reasons, of course. I can't eat gold. Or can I? You really shouldn't try to eat gold. It's not food. I'll take your word for it. You are the chef, after all. On days 9 to 10, I arrived at the ancient ruins, the first of the dangerous terrains that I must explore to complete the challenge. Before going any further, I decided to consult my loyal crew. So, Stan, Skylar, are you excited to explore the ruins? You know what, Captain Zozo. Excited? No. Eager to find the ingredients? Yes. But remember, this place is dangerous. What are you so worried about? Uh, it starts with that giant dinosaur right behind you. I thought these guys went extinct years ago, but it seems like I might be the extinct one if I don't get out of here. Ouch! That bite took away a lot of hearts. If only I knew how to use all of my different gum gum powers. Skylar has a weapon, but even together we're no match for this dinosaur. We've got to run away and fight another day. My crew and I ran away from the ancient ruins. Captain Okilawa wasn't kidding around when he said these terrains were dangerous. And this one was only the first one. That was pretty brave back there, Zozo. Even if you didn't win. My hunger meter was getting low again, so I decided to go back home and grab a bite to eat. Which would be a lot easier now that I had a chef on my pirate crew. On days 11 to 12, I made sure that Skylar felt right at home as the head chef of the new Straw Hat crew. I built her a small house and made the food preparation area even bigger. To make sure we had plenty of ingredients, I also constructed an outdoor farm and a flower garden where we could grow plants and made pens where we could keep animals for meat. 
Of course, no pirate base would be complete without a flag to tell intruders who we are. The skull and crossbones mean business. Yar. We'll be heading back to the ancient ruins in a few days. Anything else I should know about that place? I heard that Captain Okilowat has members of his own pirate crew guarding each of the terrains. No way! He has a crew of his own? Yes, and you are going to become a part of it if you fail the challenge. At least, that's what's happened to all the other ones who tried it before. He forces people to join his crew? That's terrible! I can't let that happen to me! Just be careful, Zozo. The other pirates thought that way too, before he got them. Don't worry about it. I'm not like those other pirates. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. I can talk big, but these former challengers would all be strong opponents. I had to get in gear to face them. I decided to train my battle skills by fighting some cave centipedes underground. I gave their legs to Titus the Craftsman, and he was able to make me a special suit of armor that could climb walls. That'll come in handy later. On days 13 to 15, I was in the tropical woods when I realized I needed a new way to train. Stan, what should I do in order to get stronger? I need to become powerful enough to take on the dinosaur in the ancient ruins. Have you thought of going to one of the other dangerous terrains first? Maybe you'll be able to find something to help you there. That's a good point. Might I recommend the Cloud City? With your new climbing ability, you should be able to get up there through the mountains. I'll leave right away. I set off for the highest point on the map, climbing the walls with my centipede leggings until I reached the top. At the top of the mountain, it started to snow and visibility decreased. But wow, this place is amazing. There was a bridge connecting the Cloud City to the top of the mountain. Who knew there were materials that could be used to build buildings on top of clouds? I'm definitely gonna have to take some of these special blocks back with me. I better grab them fast because I can hear something inside the city. It looks like I've got company. An ice gas is flying towards me. So you must be Captain Zozo. I'm afraid you won't find any treasure here. Are you a member of the Okilowat crew? Yes, I am Ghastly Gust, the keeper of Cloud City. My wind powers will blow you away. I could feel Ghastly Gust attempt to launch me off of the mountain, but I didn't give in. This was a fight I had to win if I was going to complete the challenge. The ghast had ice ball firing abilities, which trapped me in ice and slowed me down while also hurting me. With my gum gum abilities, I was able to stretch upwards and reach the gas. This way with my punches, I pummeled Ghastly Gust. When I took him down, he dropped some sort of weird key. I wonder what this opens. During the fight, it seems like I had achieved a new level of strength. I decided to return to the base and placed one of the cloud blocks on the ground. Nothing happened. Oh, this thing is broken. I want a refund. I started jumping on it and I suddenly leveled up. Sure enough, I was faster, stronger, and could jump two blocks higher. Whoa, I've gone to second gear. In this most powerful form, I have 21 hearts. The training was a success. On days 16 to 19, I went to explore the Misty Maze. Since I had defeated a member of Captain O'Kilowatt's crew at Cloud City, I figured I could do the same here. True to its name, the Misty Maze was easy to get lost in. There were also skeletons everywhere, which is never a good sign. Speaking of signs, I found a mysterious note inside of the treasure chest along with another key. The note said, I have searched throughout every corner of the Misty Maze and there is no trace of Captain O'Kilowatt's buried treasure. I did find this key though, so whoever finds this treasure chest might have a chance to use it. What were these keys? It looked just like the one the ghastly gust dropped. Suddenly, I was attacked by the skeletons. They must have been guarding this treasure chest for Captain O'Kilowatt. Take this! You can't stop second gear. I found my way out of the maze with the key in hand. On days 20 to 22, I went to the beach on the edge of the island and fought some aggressive walruses. They weren't that tough now that I had gotten stronger, so I was able to gather their tusks as material. I mined some pearl blocks so I could trade it to the craftsman in exchange for a better helmet and boots. Here you are, Zozo. New and improved armor for a pirate captain. Thanks, Titus. With stronger defenses, I went back to the ancient ruins. I had the feeling that I could find a third key there. The dinosaur last time was still roaming around, but I was geared up in more ways than one. I made short work of it. Wow, I really have gotten stronger. But not strong enough. Who are you? I am Anubis, the true guardian of the ancient ruins. I have been sent by Captain Okilowat to defeat you here and now. He must really want to protect that buried treasure. 
Let me guess. It's here, in the ruins? You wish. The treasure is in a place where you'll never reach. Was the buried treasure not in any of the terrains I'd been to so far? Just then, Anubis was struck by a lightning bolt. It was Captain Okilowat. But why did he attack his own crewmate? You were a fool to give away clues so easily, Anubis. I have no room on my crew for fools. I was tempted to fight him then and there, but I knew I wasn't strong enough. So I just grabbed the key he dropped and ran away. On the way out of the ruins, I grabbed some spice from the ground. Just what Skylar was looking for. On days 23 to 26, I returned to the base with all three keys and also the spice for Skylar. Thanks, Zozo. Now I can complete my ultimate recipes. Let me know if you make anything with meat in it. You still have to catch some animals if you want a meal to happen. Well, you're the boss, Skylar. No, I am the chef. You're the boss. I thought I was the captain. With the previous dangerous terrains unguarded, I could now gather materials from all of them. Yes. But first, I went into the cave to mine some iron ore so I could upgrade my stone tools to iron ones. That way I could mine even deeper. Just because I know there isn't treasure doesn't mean I shouldn't dig. I decided to go back to the ancient ruins where there are stone brick blocks. These are perfect for building a sturdier wall. And now, I was even able to build floating buildings just like in Cloud City. Borrowing some of the designs I saw in the Misty Maze, I created a series of secret passages that could be used to mislead any enemy pirates who tried to sneak into the base. Skylar came out of the house to give us a leash to help with the animals. I could use it for capturing animals, and I made sure to gather up some of the tastiest creatures I could find. I buffed up my defense by building a wall out of the strong blocks I had found. Even though the base was coming along great, I still wondered what to do with the three keys that I had gotten from fighting Captain Okilowat's crew. I'd have to explore the island tomorrow and see if there was a way I could use them. On days 27 to 31, I traveled to a part of the island I had never been to before. It was a valley covered in smog. I wonder where it's all coming from. Even though it was hard to see, I could sense somebody sneaking up on me. Who's there? A pirate I had never seen before stepped out of the smog. Oh no, I've been found. Forgive me, Captain. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. Probably. Who are you? My name is Jovi the Ice Pirate. I'm a member of Okilowat's crew, but I can't stand by and let him imprison other pirates anymore. You should come back to base with me. It's much safer out there than hiding in this smoke cloud. Okay, I'll bring my special materials as well. They can only be found in this valley. Jovi went to mine some of the material, and I left the smog valley with him to return to the base. His special material, bronze dragon scales, were perfect for crafting an even stronger suit of armor. In the meantime, I added another tower to the base, and of course, more pirate flags. I also gave the outside of the wall a decorative wooden layer to make it look more like a pirate ship on land. Wow, that's perfect! Then Jovi came walking up to me and gave me a few samples of the bronze dragon scales. Now to go see Titus about that armor. I went to visit the craftsman and showed him the special materials. It seems like they brought back memories for him. These materials come from an island, far away from here. They're from a suit of armor I made back when I was undertaking the challenge. Wait, these are your materials? Yes, and the armor I built using them was one of my best. It belonged to a very dear crewmate who is sadly no longer here. I'm so sorry, Titus. Do you think we'd be able to rebuild the armor? We have to go back to that valley. The rest of it could still be down there. On days 32 to 35, Titus and I went to the Smog Valley and searched for the remaining pieces of the armor. The smog was so thick that it made it difficult to find anything, but it turned out that it was coming from some kind of huge factory. I noticed there was a door on the side of the factory with three keyholes. Those must be where the three keys go. Just then, we were ambushed by several giant trolls from the smog. There's so many, how can we stand a chance? Captain Zozo, you must unlock the door. I'll hold them off. But Titus, you're not strong enough. Who do you think I am, Captain? I am the craftsman, and these are my crafts. Just then, Titus equipped a really cool set of armor I had never seen before. Now go, find out what's in there. I ran to the door and unlocked it, knowing that I may never see Titus again. His armor could survive the attacks of those giants, but not for long. Using the time Titus bought me, I put all three keys into the door and it began to open. Yes. Titus, come on, it's not too late. But it was. I turned and saw him fall to the ground after an extremely hard hit from the giants. Titus! I ran in and knocked down one of the giants, surprised at my own strength. But the next one hit me and took away most of my hearts. Captain, 
I've done all I can. Equip my armor. It's the only way. Okay. With Titus's enchanted armor, I fought back against the giants, fueled by the rage of what they did to my friend. When they were all defeated, the armor vanished into thin air. It was gone, and so was Titus. On days 36 to 39, I went through the large door that led to the factory. It was dark inside, but I soon found a light switch. I flipped it on and saw this place was up to something really sinister. Giants, like the ones outside, were being modified on a conveyor belt to become tricked out cyborgs. These must be Captain Okilowat's secret weapons. What is he planning to use them for? Meat boop, intruder alert. Uh-oh, an evil robot. Time to show no mercy. I hit the mechanical menace hard, and he was launched back. Yes. I was ready to go for round two when the robots seemed to stop fighting. Where am I? Where's the rest of my crew? Where's Titus? You knew Titus, Mr. Robot Man? Yes, we were members of the same pirate crew. I was captured here and turned into a cyborg. No way, that's terrible. I wondered if Okilowat would do the same to me and the rest of my friends if he captured me. Captain Okilowat's first mate did this to me with his powers. He's a man named Retro Gary who ate the Borgborg fruit. He has my real body. We have to get it back. Don't worry, we will, for Titus. Thank you. It seems like I was able to snap Titus's old friend out of his cyborg mind control. Sometimes you gotta beat the mob inside to save yourself. On days 40 to 43, I built a memorial to Titus on the front of my base. Rest in peace, legendary craftsman. You did everything you could, Zozo. Thanks, Stan. This base is the safest place on the island now. We should let some of the good people from Cloud City live here. Good idea. I built some more floating dwellings inside the walls of the base. That way, the Cloud Villagers could live the way they were used to. We went to the Cloud City to invite the friendly Cloud Villagers to come live with us, and they agreed. There are so many people living at the base now, and all of them are counting on me to find the treasure. I can't let anybody down. I promise I'll become the King of the Pirates. I believe you can do it, Zozo. Oh, hi, Jovi. How are you liking the base? I'm really grateful for the fact you took me in. I also thought I should tell you where you can find more of those materials I brought with me. You mean the pieces of Titus's armor? Yeah, there's more of it at my old hideout near the Smog Valley. It's in a badland where Captain Okilowat tests his lightning powers. Sounds like I'll need to be careful, but it means getting the rest of those materials. I have to do it. For Titus! If I could complete that armor, I'd be able to face Captain Okilowat and his secret weapons with my friend's ultimate work. I prepared for a journey to the Badlands. On days 44 to 49, I traveled to the Badlands. Lightning strikes had destroyed this place. There were no mobs anywhere, not even friendly ones. But there was Captain Okilowat. He was practicing his lightning strikes, just like Jovi said. I see you there, Zozo. You're almost halfway out of days to complete my challenge. Are you sure you want to take me on now and cut it short? I'm only here for the rest of Titus's armor, Okilowat. I'll deal with you later. Oh, how brave. But I'm afraid you have misunderstood whose armor it is. I am the one who controls the island, so everything on it is mine. I have already gotten those materials for myself, and I'm going to use them for my secret weapons. You mean those cyborg giants? Yes. In fact, I have a prototype for you to play with right now. Enjoy, Straw Hat Zozo. Captain Okilowat disappeared by summoning lightning on himself, and one of those giant cyborgs showed up, armed with special futuristic enchantments. I was not going to back down. The cyborg was big and had a huge reach, but I was quick and ran around to avoid its attacks. I launched a barrage of second gear punches at the cyborg, toppling it over. Some secret weapon you are, you belong in the recycle. But even that wasn't enough. The giant cyborg started chasing me towards a rock wall. On days 50 to 53, I was backed into a corner. The giant cyborg was still attacking me in a canyon. I climbed up the wall with my centipede leggings and dropped down to strike from above. Gum gum battle axe! That one looked like it did some real damage. I had to keep going while I had the advantage. The mob was really strong, but I managed to knock it out with some more punches. Man, that was just one of those secret weapons. If more were unleashed, I don't know how I could win. I need to go home and eat some good food. I couldn't worry about that now though, because the giant had dropped some of Titus's armor pieces. 
When I touched them, I could see Titus and his crewmates in the past. I could see them exploring all of the Misty Maze, Cloud City, and the ancient ruins. All of them were wearing powerful suits of armor. In the ancient ruins, Titus even knocked down a tree with only one swing. That's how strong he was. It seemed like they almost defeated Captain O'Kilowatt back in the day. But Retro Gary helped out and turned Titus's friend into a robot. He destroyed the armor, and using a slingshot, he scattered the pieces of it throughout the Badlands in the valley. I had no idea Titus had been holding on to so much sadness. I'll make sure to complete the challenge so that nobody will ever have to face a defeat like that here again. On days 54 to 57, I made my way back to the factory to see if I could learn any more from Titus's robot crewmate. When I arrived on the inside and flipped the switch, I saw that a bunch of the giants had broken the conveyor belt and started to run free. This is probably bad for Captain O'Kilowatt in the long run, but it's bad for me right now. Those giants seemed really angry. Looks like you could use some help. Thanks, Roboman. A friend of Titus is a friend of mine. Working together, we managed to defeat the ordinary giants. They dropped some kind of giant power-up, too. Huh? I suddenly grew bigger and became Luffy, third gear. Yo ho ho! It looked like I arrived at the factory just in time, too, because the conveyor belt was filled with the rest of the armor shards. Yes, I wore these once. When I was fully human, they belong to you now. Thanks, Roboman. I promise to get your body back. When I finally made it back to the base, I went to Titus's chest and picked up the last armor pieces I needed. In the chest, I also found Titus's hammer. I went to the crafting table, and doing the best I could, I put the special armor back together. Somehow, it felt like Titus was watching over me, guiding me through the crafting process. I swung the hammer over the pieces on the crafting table, and the recipe was complete. I equipped the armor, and it looked like it would protect me really well. Almost a bit too much. The helmet provided so much protection, I could barely see out of it. Maybe for now I'll take the helmet off. I like being able to see where I'm going. Now that I had put on the restored suit of armor, I saw another vision of the past. Titus was digging into the ground at the tropical forest. What did this mean? Should I try to search for treasure there? On days 58 to 62, I stocked the animal pens and loaded up the farm with all the delicious ingredients I found while exploring. Onions, rutabaga, sweet berries, and beetroot. Now the meals for my crew would be the tastiest of all time. Skylar made a big meal for everyone at the base. We set up a large picnic table, and for once, things were peaceful around here. Bon appetit! Enjoy your feast! Oh boy! There's meat, veggie, all of the food groups! This is the best! After dinner, I decided to mine so that I could have powerful tools to match my new set of powerful armor. Since one of my moves is called Gum Gum Battle Axe, I figured along with the rest of the tools, I could craft a diamond battle axe to use for chopping wood and enemies alike. They'll never see this coming! Yes. I decided to have the inside of the base look like a pirate ship to match the outside, and lined all the inner walls with dark wood. I made sure to keep lots of chests around to fill with gold. Can't have a pirate base without any treasure of our own. When all of this is over, I'll have O'Kilowatt's treasure in here too. On days 63 to 66, I went back to the tropical forest with Stan to see if maybe we could find the spot where Titus had been digging in the flashback. I don't see anything that looks like that place. What about you, Stan? Why are you asking me? I didn't see the flashback. Oh, yeah, right. You did say he was digging, so maybe you should try that hole over there. This looks a little deeper than the... Whoa! I'm falling in! I tumbled down into the shaft, leading deep down below the ground. If I hadn't caught myself with my wall climbing, that might have been it. But look at this place. There's a huge, empty chamber lit by torchlight. That's weird. It feels like there should be something in here. I dug around on the floor and found an unusual sarcophagus hidden among the rocks. It flung itself open, and out came a mummy! Back off, you gift-wrapped meanie! Thank you for setting me free. I've been trapped inside that box ever since my captain lost the silence challenge. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you were going to attack me. Say, what was your captain's name? His name was Captain Anubis. I was the most loyal member of his crew. Is he okay? No, I'm sorry. But I'm putting together a crew to stand up to Captain O'Kilowatt. Do you want in? Of course. I don't like that guy at all. Also, this place was supposed to be where his treasure was, but he only put me here. Where do you think the rest of it is? I don't know, but first things first, you've gotta help me get out of here. Oh, we can just climb out. Oh, right. Only I can do that.
On days 67 to 70, I used the diamond tools I crafted to dig a tunnel leading back above ground. I broke open some of the blocks, and a devourer jumped into our path. It growled and hissed. Please tell me you're friendly too. It definitely wasn't, because it tried to devour me. I guess that's where the name comes from. If we don't defeat that devourer, we'll never get out of here. Don't worry, mummy. I'm your captain now, and I won't let anything bad happen to you. I meant those words too. All the other pirates who came to this island before me may have lost their way, but I made a vow that I'd keep everyone safe. That's how I'd become the king of the pirates, and no devourer would stop me. After I finished it off, the mummy and I continued our progress towards the surface. No other mobs showed up to attack us, so the rest of the journey was easy. Before I knew it, we were back near the top of the hole inside the tropical forest. Stan was waiting for us, and he seemed happy to see that I survived. Great to see you, Captain Zozo. But who's that mummy guy with you? I was once part of the crew of Anubis, but after seeing the bravery of Zozo, I've decided to join up with you guys. Well, the more the merrier. We all went back to the base together and had another delicious dinner to celebrate our crew getting even bigger. It was great to see so many people joining the team. I couldn't help but feel like we were all becoming one big happy family. On days 71 to 74, I was in the Badlands when I saw smog was everywhere again. I decided to take a look around. <coughs> it's kind of hard to breathe in here, but this looks just like the smog in the valley where I found that factory. That must be important. But what's even more important is that you <coughs> you find more of my adventures by searching ZOZO in the YouTube search bar. I walked for a long time before I saw exactly what I expected. Another factory for making those cyborg giants. I might have stolen back the armor pieces, but it seems like Captain Okilowat still hadn't given up on his plan. And there he is. I'll have to take him on. Foolish pirate. Have you forgotten that I train here? Taste me lightning. He started hitting me with lightning bolts. The armor was helping me avoid the worst of it, but he was too fast for me to get a lot of hits in. I realized I was still too weak to beat him, so I hightailed it out of there. I'll have to return to that factory later. But until then, the Badlands are off limits. That terrain is too dangerous to take lightly. On days 75 to 78, I was back at my base and doing some more work on the interior. Mostly by making the dining room bigger and more decorated. This is the place where everyone eats together, so it's gotta look nice. While I was thinking about all the friends that were already here to stay, I was surprised to get a visit from the robot. Zozo, I've come to help you unlock the full power of the armor you are wearing. This armor can become even more powerful? Do you remember back when Titus wore his own special armor? How it made him way stronger than usual, while also granting him protection? Yeah, I saw both of you use that armor power in the flashback too. You can use it too. It was powered by the friendship between Titus and myself. That's our secret weapon. But how do I do it? I became friends with Titus while he was alive, but now he's gone. But I'm still here, Zozo, and I've come to give you what you are missing. I'm going to give you my friendship. Right. We fought together at that factory. We're definitely friends now. I accepted his friendship, and the power of the armor began to awaken. At the same time, so did my own power. I grew again, becoming Luffy fourth gear. Now I have 45 hearts. I'm almost strong enough to defeat Captain Okilawad now. I can feel it. On days 79 to 84, I decided to destroy the new factory with my fourth gear strength and supreme armor. For Titus, of course. And also because now, I actually could probably do it. There are a bunch of those cyborg giants, but they were incomplete without the armor pieces that now made up my armor. You're no match for the power of friendship. My crew gives me strength. It was amazing to see how much stronger that I had become. These giants that were once going to be an unstoppable army were now completely unable to beat me. I feel like I can unleash even more strength. Gum Gum Super Jump. I grew massively, so I jumped on top of the factory, breaking through the roof. There were more robots inside the factory too. Look. He wears the captain's armor. Were these guys part of Titus's crew as well? Yes, we were captured and made into robotic servants by Retro Gary. Our real bodies are with him. Wow, I really need to do something about him. It seems like he's inconvenienced just about everyone. And how? Also, each of us kept a little bit more special material hidden away, in case the captain ever came back for it. Excellent! I could use that to make some tools out of it. Yes. Goodbye, diamond tools. Hello, special material tools. 
Now I've got a full set of armor and everything made of a material that gets stronger with friendship. I might as well call this stuff friend metal. On days 85 to 89, I got back to base, only to find that there were mechanized mobs attacking. Could there have been more cyborgs? No way, I thought I got rid of them all. Don't worry everyone, the captain is here to help. These cyborgs were made from the devourers rather than the giants. It seems like Captain Okilowat had branched out and started making minions out of other things. They started retreating, but I'm gonna follow them back to the source. You won't get away that easily. I ran as fast as I could until I bumped into someone. It was another human, and they appeared to be carrying a bow and arrow. You can call me Sharpshooter. I came here from the Island of Snipers in search of buried treasure. I was challenged by a pirate captain who controlled lightning, that if I didn't- Sorry to interrupt, but I'll need to stop you right there. I'm actually on that quest right now. Oh, having any luck? Luck? Not exactly, but I'm doing pretty well at this point. Well, uh, let me know how it goes if you manage to get the treasure. Thanks? Personally, I think it has been more trouble than it's worth. The real treasure has been the friends I've made along the way. On days 90 to 94, I found that the cyborgs had gone back to a third factory. Man, how quickly can they build these things? This one was the biggest factory of all, and I could tell why. Because Retro Gary was right there, ready to fight with me. Well, how do you do, Straw Hat Zozo? Your crew has become quite the source of trouble for my boss, so I'm gonna make sure that you're no longer a threat. You can't beat me, Gary. I've got the power of friendship on my side. Your power of friendship is no match for the power of my Borborg fruit. Cyborg devourers, combine with me and go into Super Mecha Retro Gary mode. Retro Gary combined with all of the minions to become one super powerful cyborg. This would be a tough fight for sure, but if I won, I'd be able to get all of Titus's crew's bodies back. I swung my special material axe at Retro Gary, and it seemed to do a little bit of damage. He can be hurt, which means that I can win. His attacks were really strong, but so was my armor. I stood my ground and continued to hit him over and over again. On days 95 to 97, Retro Gary still hadn't admitted defeat, but then again, neither had I. Borg Borg Blaster! Gum Gum Mallet! We traded attacks until I noticed some of the cyborg parts were starting to fall off of him. He was getting smaller with each attack. Soon he'd be back to normal, and that's when I could take him out. Captain Okilowat and I are going to create an army of invincible cyborgs created from the world's strongest pirates. And both you and that armor are going to be our finest work yet. Me? Become a cyborg? You're dreaming, Gary. But here's a better dream. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. And with one final punch, I smashed his robotic body into pieces. Before his power faded away, Gary laughed maniacally. Apparently, he had one more secret left to reveal. Zozo, there is no treasure. It was just a story we came up with to lure pirates here to this island. The whole time, our plan was just to gather the raw material of our cyborg project. The other pirates were too weak, so they just became those low-level servants. If only I won against you, we'd finally have a perfect subject. With that, his power reached zero. Could it be true? Was there really no treasure? Either way, I'd have to take down Captain Okilowat to protect my friends, my crew, and the world from his evil plan. On day 98, I returned to the base and told everyone what happened. To my great delight, all the members of Titus's crew had gotten their bodies back when I defeated Retro Gary. <laughs> it seems our friendship with Titus was strong enough to grant you victory in this battle. It's not over yet. I've still got Okilowat to take care of. We'll be right behind you. I stopped by the house to visit Skylar, who had been preparing a welcome back meal for me ever since I left to go fight Gary. Here you go, Captain. This has all of the best ingredients. It was made as a sign of my loyalty to this crew and also our friendship. Thank you, Skylar. I don't know where I'd be without you, and I'd definitely be going hungry. Just then, Jovi and the Mummy approached. It seems you made good use of all that special material. It wasn't the material, Jovi. Captain Zozo's courage is what allowed him to defeat Retro Gary. 
If I'm being honest, I think it was a little bit of both of you guys. It was material. No, it was courage. Material. Courage. Okay, okay, guys, I get it. Just stop fighting. I was so thankful to see that everybody was safe and sound after the cyborg attack on the base. Well, almost everybody. There was still one important friend that I had to go see. On day 99, I headed back towards the destroyed village where everything had begun almost 100 days ago. That was the place where Captain O'Kilowatt had challenged me, but now it would be the place that I would challenge him. But before that could happen, I remembered to walk through the tropical forest and say hello to Stan. Hey, Zozo, it's your toucan man, Stan. It's hard to believe how much we've been through to get here. You're telling me, friend. But treasure or no treasure, we're gonna see this through until the end. Somehow I knew you'd be the pirate to save us all. I knew it from the moment you set foot on this island. Stan and I walked together to the starting point and saw that Captain O'Kilowatt hadn't shown up alone. Your time is almost up, Zozo. You may have defeated Gary, but I still have a few more giant cyborgs left. And once I juice them up with my full lightning power, they will be invincible. Yeah, right. That was Skylar's voice. She was here, and so was the rest of the crew. We've got this, Captain. We'll take on the giants while you settle things with Captain O'Kilowatt. My crew sprung into action. I was so grateful and proud of all of them. But now I had to do my part. I was going to send Captain O'Kilowatt flying once and for all. He flew away into the clouds. By grabbing onto Stan, the two of us flew upward into his last retreat. On day 100, I landed on the Cloud City Island and came face to face with Captain O'Kilowatt. You shouldn't have lied about the treasure or turned people into cyborgs, or destroyed Anubis, or all the other evil things you did. You're a really bad captain, you know that? Oh, spare me. We're pirates. We're supposed to be the bad guys. We steal things. We're selfish. And we don't let something like friendship stop us from reaching our goals. That's where you're wrong, oh kilowatt. I won't even call you a captain anymore. You're just the guy I need to beat before I become the king of the pirates. King of the pirates? Ha! <laughs> Keep dreaming. I will. I'll never stop dreaming. I'll never give up. And I'll never let you hurt anyone else. We charged at each other and began our greatest battle yet. His lightning bolts were as potent as ever, but with my courage to guide me, I pushed through. I channeled my inner anger and suddenly grew in size. Then I landed a four gear punch on him. He looked like that really hurt. Guess he wasn't as tough as I thought. He was just really good at dodging. He was at the edge of the cloud, and I punched him super hard, sending him flying to another smaller cloud. I used my gum gum super jump ability to get to him. One more attack like that, and you're done. You'll never hit me again. I'm going to destroy this cloud with me lightning powers. Feel the storm. Sure enough, the clouds began to fall away beneath me. You can't make me fall. Too bad I had nowhere else to jump. This left me as an open target, and O'Kilowatt launched everything he had at me. This be the end, Zozo. No, it's the beginning of my dinner. I pulled out Skylar's welcome back meal and ate it. My health and hunger were instantly restored. Yummy. What? Good food from a good friend can weather any storm. You still can't hit me. Over here, Zappy. Stan flapped around near the bad guy's head. That was the only chance I needed. I jumped off my platform and smacked him in the face. Bye-bye, gum gum fist. That did it. O'Kilowatt was sent flying into the distance, never to be seen again. As I fell back towards the ground, I smiled because I knew there was no way this was the end. My entire crew sat on a trampoline made of cloud blocks to catch me. I landed safely among all my friends. They were the real treasure, one that could never be buried. And as Pirate King, I treasure them always. On day one, I spawned in as Spidey from Spidey and his amazing friends. I was surrounded by friendly spiders who were bigger than me. Wow, I'm really small. I must be a baby version of Spidey. But where are my friends? None of the spiders got a chance to tell me because the green goblin jumped out from behind a bush. There you are. Thought you could hide from me with all these spiders. Well, you were wrong, Spidey. Tag, you're it. Ha ha ha. He threw a pumpkin bomb, and I jumped out of the way just in time. But the other spiders were caught in the explosion. Oh, no. I was the only one who made it out okay. You're rotten, Green Goblin. Rotten to the core. What are you doing here? You're asking the wrong question, Spidey. You're asking why I'm here, but you should be asking, why isn't Spin here? 
Right, Spin, Miles Morales, my friend. Why isn't he here? What did you do with him? That's for me to know and you to find out. If you want to get him back, y'all need to come and find me and beat me in a fight. If you can't find my hideout in 100 days, I'll make sure you never see your little buddy again. He threw another pumpkin bomb and disappeared, leaving me alone with my thoughts. Oh no, that evil villain kidnapped Spin, and I only have 100 days to get him back. If I'm going to fight the Green Goblin and win, I need to get a whole lot stronger first. On day two, I decided to get out of the planes and into a new location. With all of the spiders gone, I was completely on my own. And there's nothing for me to climb or swing from out here. I need some tall buildings or some trees. So I headed into the forest. I already had 10 hearts. I sure hope I don't run into any trouble out here. I must have jinxed myself because a group of gremlins came out from behind a bunch of trees and started closing in around me. Uh -oh. Hey, why are you bothering me? I didn't do anything to you. Yeah, they didn't have to. We're here on orders from the Green Goblin. He wanted us to deliver something to you in person. A beatdown. Uh-oh, I'm not strong enough to take on all of these enemies at once. Let's get them, boys. The gremlins were getting closer, and I couldn't see anywhere to run. Was this it? Was I already going to lose on my second day? Hey, pick on someone your own size. I looked towards the voice, and I saw Rabbit skiing towards the gremlins. He skied right into them, breaking through the circle, and I was able to run away before they could get to me. When I finally stopped running, I noticed the rabbit was right behind me. Thanks for the help. No problem. I can't stand bullies. My name is Harry. Hi, Harry. I'm Spidey, but you can call me Zozo. On day three, Harry the skiing rabbit took me back to his home with him in the underground rabbit burrow. It was really nice of him, especially since I didn't have a base of my own yet. Now I have a safe place to rest for a little while where the green goblin wouldn't bother me. Thanks, Harry. This is so nice. No problem, Zozo. Hey, there's someone I want you to meet. He knows a lot about the Green Goblin, and I think he can help you out. He took me to the burrow of a Giza rabbit. Hello, I understand you're going up against the Green Goblin, a nasty fellow. Don't I know it. Well, forgive me for saying so, but you won't get far like that. You need some tools, some weapons, and you need to get a whole lot stronger. I know, but where should I start? The forest to the north has lots of wood. Go gather some so you can start making tools. You'll need to be well equipped with the strongest tools you can find, as well as an open heart and an adventurous spirit. It takes a hero to defeat a villain. And if you really try, you can become the hero that takes down the Green Goblin once and for all. That sounded like a whole lot of work, but as I thought about all the spiders the Green Goblin hurt and thought about Spin being held prisoner somewhere, I knew it was worth it. I guess I'd better get right to it then. First things first, I need to go gather that wood. You'd better go with him, Harry. We all need a friend in tough times, and Zozo has quite the journey ahead of him. Okay, let's go, Zozo. On days four and five, Harry and I went out into the northern forest to start gathering wood. There was no time to waste, so I started punching as many trees as I could. After I gathered enough wood, I built a crafting bench and crafted a set of wooden tools. Hooray, now I can start gathering stone. Yes. You're doing awesome so far. Thanks, but I think this is the easy part. It'll only get harder from here. I'll be here to help every step of the way. Every hero needs a sidekick, right? That's true, but enough talking for now. I've got to get enough stone to upgrade my tools. I got to work, and once I had enough stone, I upgraded all of my tools from wooden ones to stone ones. Ready to help me build a base? We need a secret hideout if I'm gonna be a real superhero. Yeah! We started building the base and made sure to add a room for me and another room for Harry so we both had somewhere to sleep. While we were building, a tarantula hawk flew up and started attacking me. What's the big idea? I couldn't let it get me, not when I was finally making progress, and I definitely wouldn't let it hurt Harry. The fight wasn't easy, but I won. And afterward, I felt myself getting stronger. Hey, I gained a heart. You're one step closer to being a superhero. Yeah. On day six through eight, I explored more of the forest. I wanted to see what other resources I could use to build my base, or if there was any useful item someone might have dropped. As I was getting ready to pick some apples from a tree, I heard someone yelling. Help, somebody, help. Sounds like someone needs a hero. I ran toward the sound of the voice, and I saw a raccoon being attacked by a pack of wolves. 
Don't worry, I'll help you. I'm your friendly neighborhood Zozo. As soon as the wolves saw me coming, they left the raccoon alone and ran at me. They snapped their jaws, trying to bite me and scratch me with their claws. And I dodged their attacks, and I hit them back with my stone sword. Ha! You're no match for me. I'm getting pretty good at this fighting to defend the innocent thing. After a while, I tired them out, and the wolves ran off and left me and the raccoon alone. Thank you so much. You saved my life. No problem. I'm Zozo. My name is May. I'm sorry to bother you, but you're such a strong fighter. Would you help me with something else? Helping is what I do. I'm so glad. And please, come with me to the swamp. There's a nasty bad guy there I need help with. Lead the way. On days 9 and 10, May led me to the swamp to help deal with her problem. So, what's the deal with this swamp? I was staying here when this big, mean ogre came in and started stomping around and telling me to get out. He broke my house apart and told me that this was his swamp now and I needed to get out. But all of my things are still here and I don't want to just abandon them. Oh jeez, that does sound like a lot of trouble. I'll do whatever I can to help. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I found you. What are you doing in my swamp? The ogre jumped out, roaring and running right at us. He was much bigger than me, but I couldn't back down. I drew my sword and got ready to fight him. This isn't your swamp. You can't just kick people out. I can do whatever I want. I'm the biggest, baddest ogre in the swamp, which means it all belongs to me. You can't take things from people just because you're bigger and stronger. Who's gonna stop me? Me! I ran at him with my sword, but he grabbed me and lifted me into the air. Then he threw me. I landed hard and got the wind knocked out of me. Uh-oh, he might be too strong. He was getting ready to grab me again, and I swiped at him with my sword. He knocked the sword out of my hand, and it went flying. I had to run and grab it, and I knew if I tried to fight this ogre right now, I would lose. Let's get out of here, May. We'll go back to my base, and when I'm strong enough, I'll come back. I promise. Okay, thank you for trying. I didn't want to run away, but I can't save the day if I let myself get beaten by an ogre. So even though it wasn't fun to leave the fight, it was better that May and I were safe. On days 11 and 12, I brought May back to my base. I built her a room of her own with a chest and a crafting bench. Thank you so much, both of you. Of course, stay as long as you like. We're happy to have you. I was meaning to ask, do you know anything about the green goblin? That monster? I sure do. He kidnapped a friend of mine, and I'm trying to learn more about him. I'm pretty sure he lives underground somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but I've heard a lot of rumors about his underground cave hideout. If you can find out where he is, and you're strong enough to fight him, you might be able to use the element of surprise to help you defeat him. Underground, huh? That's really helpful. Thank you, May. Of course. The Green Goblin is terrible, and I'd be happy to see someone finally take him down. After I talked with May, I decided to add some food sources to my base. I know, I think I saw some chickens in the woods. Yes. So I built a fence to contain the chickens, then I went out looking for them. There you are. Come with me, chickens. I'll show you your new home. I herded the chickens back to the base and got them all set up in the fenced area. Then I cut down some grass and planted some weed at the base. Now we'll have plenty of food, and I learned more about the Green Goblin. What a successful day. On days 13 to 15, I decided to find some ways to get stronger, so I turned to Harry for advice. I think the best way to get stronger is to get some more experience. Explore new areas, go on some quests, fight more enemies. You can't learn if you don't put yourself out there, and upgrading your tools probably won't hurt either. That's a great idea, thank you. If I was going to upgrade my tools, I needed to get mining. I mined some coal and some iron too. I raced back to my base to make a furnace. Then I smelted the iron and used it to craft all iron tools. Great, now time to explore. Where can I go? I should go somewhere really different from anywhere I've been so far. I know, I'll go to the ice spikes. So I gathered all of my new tools and headed off to the ice spikes. Brr, it's getting cold. I'm not used to this weather. Maybe I should have brought some more supplies with me. Maybe you should have, but you didn't because you're weak and you'll never beat the green goblin. Who said that? I looked up and saw a green golem standing on top of a tall ice spike. I did. The boss sent me to check on your progress, and he's gonna laugh so hard when he hears about all this. 
But first, I think I'll teach you a lesson about trying to be a hero when you're really just a zero. Then he jumped down from the ice bike and landed right in front of me. But I was ready for him, and I had my brand new iron sword ready to go. Not so fast. He ran at me, and I swung my sword. He tried to hit me, but I dodged and attacked again. It was a pretty tough fight, but I managed to win in the end. After I defeated him, I noticed he dropped something. Cool, an explosive bottle. I can use this to fight the green goblin. Yes. I was so excited to show my friends what I found that I ran all the way back to my base. Harry was waiting for me. You should build an armory to keep your weapons. Great idea. So I built an armory, and after I did, I found myself getting stronger. Whoa, I gained two hearts. On days 16 to 19, I decided to follow Harry's advice and keep exploring to get more experience. Maybe I'll find something else that will help me beat the Green Goblin or make a new friend. As I was looking around, I found an abandoned house. Anyone here? No one answered, so I let myself inside to have a look around. It was totally empty, except for a chest. I opened the chest and found an old book. I guess I'll read it. Superheroes should always take the time to read every now and again. As I read the book, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Whoa, so the Green Goblin is really Norman Osborn, the scientist. That's why he's so good at making those pumpkin bombs. I can't believe it. But it's in a book, so it must be true. Maybe this information will help me later. I grabbed the book to take with me and left the house to head back to my base. As I did, I saw the gremlins from before. Not you guys again. You better believe it, Spidey. The gremlins rushed at me and I fought them off with my sword. When they realized they were outmatched, they started to run away. This ain't the last you'll see of us. Whoa, oh, the green goblin. Tell your boss I'm getting stronger every day and I'm coming to get my friend. I couldn't believe it. I beat the gremlins on my own this time. Wow. I was really starting to feel like a superhero who could defeat the villain and save the day. I wasn't quite ready yet, but I had already come so far. On days 20 to 22, I looked for some more bad guys to fight in the forest around my base. I wanted to get stronger and keep my friends safe at the same time. A mutant spider pig attacked May while she was looking for food, and I rushed in to save the day. Get away from her! I swung my sword and defeated the mutant spider pig easily. I was so much stronger than I was on my first day. I think I'm finally ready to take on the ogre and get your stuff back. Are you sure? He's so scary. I am. I just need to make some armor first. I gathered some more iron and crafted myself some shiny new iron armor. With this on, he won't be able to hurt me. I made my journey back to the swamp where the mean old ogre was waiting for me. Back for more, are ya? I'll be happy to beat you again if you didn't learn your lesson the first time. He grabbed me, just like he did before. But when he threw me, my armor protected me from getting hurt. Nice try, but I'm ready for you this time. He was so surprised that he didn't have time to dodge my attack. I got him with my sword, then I hit him again. This time, he was the one who got knocked over. Oh, fine, thank what you came for. Just leave before the Green Goblin finds out you're here. He's scared of how strong you're getting, and he's not afraid to cheat and have someone else take you out before you find his hideout. Whoa, so he's actually getting nervous. Don't get too confident. You're still nowhere near tough enough to beat him. Just go. So I grabbed a chest full of May's things, and I headed back to my base. On days 23 to 26, I returned to my base and went to find May. Here you go, I got this back for you. Oh, thank you so much. It has everything I own inside. I was so scared that I lost it all after that ogre destroyed my house. Can I stay here for a little while though, before I find a new place to live? Stay as long as you like. Have you ever thought about building a guard tower to keep the base safe in case the Green Goblin sends any goons this way? That's a great idea. I got to work building a guard tower, and when I was finished, I felt much safer. But I needed some ranged weapons to go with the guard tower, so I gathered flint, feathers, and string, and crafted a bow and arrows. Then May came over to talk to me, and she was holding something. I found this in my chest of items, and I wanted to give it to you. My way of saying thanks for all of your help. What is it? A newspaper. It's enchanted. I think it might be useful for you. Whoa, thank you so much. 
With my enchanted newspaper, my new guard tower, and my bow and arrow, I was feeling more prepared than ever. On days 27 to 31, I decided to get back to exploring and looking for new ways to get stronger. I hiked out to the Badlands to see what I could find. While I was exploring, I saw some tarantulas stuck in a hole. I'll get you guys out of there, just hold on. I helped them all climb out, and then I sent them back to my base so they would have a safe place to stay for a while. Spiders have to stick together. After I helped the tarantulas, I looked around the Badlands some more. There weren't any enemies to fight, but there was a lot of terracotta. This looks cool. I'll gather some for my base. I got as much terracotta as I could take with me and went back to my base to decorate with it. I worked hard on creating a beautiful terracotta floor in my room, and when it was finished, I kicked back and ate a snack. But I couldn't rest for very long. Zozo, I need your help. I sprung into action. What's wrong? There's trouble in the rabbit burrow. We have to go help them. Let's go. On days 32 to 35, Harry and I went back to the underground rabbit burrow to check things out and help save the rabbits there. When we got there, we saw a bunch of the Green Goblin's gremlins attacking and throwing pumpkin bombs. They were destroying everything. Not so fast. Don't worry, rabbits. Your friendly neighborhood Spidey Zozo is here to help. What are you gonna do about it? I drew my sword. Remember this? They looked pretty nervous, and I started slashing left and right, taking down as many gremlins as I could. I thought I'd beaten all of them, but there was one more hiding behind a nearby wall. Before I could get to him, he pulled out another pumpkin bomb and threw it right at the Giza rabbit who helped me before. No! But it was too late. The gremlin blew him up. You'll pay for this! I took down the last gremlin fast, but I didn't feel any better. I was so upset about the Giza rabbit. It's not your fault. It's the Green Goblin. He did this. You're right, Harry. And we're going to make sure he never hurts anyone else again. On days 36 to 39, I decided to head to the beach and see if I could find anything useful there. I needed all the strength and weapons I could get if I was going to beat the Green Goblin before he could strike again. Are there any heroes out here? Please, I need help. A hero? That's me. Who said that? I can help. Me. I looked over and I saw a walrus sitting on the sand. What's wrong? Out there in the water is my favorite rock to sit on when I want to catch a few rays. But when I try to sit there now, there's a mean octopus who keeps attacking me and trying to pull me into the water. That's not very nice. You wait here, friend. I'll go teach that octopus some manners. Be careful. He's very smart. It's okay. I'm pretty smart too. I swam out to the walrus's favorite rock and waited for the octopus to try and mess with me. Wow, what a nice rock. I sure hope no one tries to pull me into the water. But I did hope someone would try, and I was ready. I didn't think I could fight in the water while trying to swim at the same time, so I would have to be able to fight from a distance. Good thing I crafted a ranged weapon. I grabbed my bow and arrow and waited. Sure enough, that pesky octopus showed up and tried to grab me. Before he could, I fired my arrow at him. A direct hit! He tried to grab me again, so I fired a few more arrows for good measure until I was sure I had won. Then I swam back to the shore to give the walrus the good news. Thank you so much. Are you the hero that's trying to take on the green goblin? I sure am. Well, here's some advice. I heard he's strong, but not very fast. That's why he throws those pumpkin bombs. If you can avoid his bombs, it'll be easier to get him. Thanks so much, I'll remember that. On days 40 to 43, I returned home to my base. It was looking a little bit dull, so I decided to spruce up the place with some torches for extra light and to keep any zombies away. As I was finishing up, Harry came to see me. Say, this looks great. Thanks. Do you think we could make room for some more guests to stay here? I met some squirrels in the woods who said the green goblin blew up the tree they were living in. I thought maybe we could help them out. Sure, the more the merrier. Hey, let's build them a tree house, then they'll feel right at home. Harry and I got to work, and before long, we built a great tree house for the squirrels to live in. Then Harry went to get the squirrels and show them their new home. It felt good to help more people in need. It was a nice reminder that being a hero isn't just about beating bad guys, it's about helping those who need it. The tarantulas came to see me after I finished the treehouse, and then they told me that they heard a rumor about some baby spiders that were being held prisoner in a nearby cave. Well, I couldn't let that happen. I promised them I would go over there and rescue those baby spiders. 
On days 44 to 49, I traveled to the cave the tarantulas told me about to save those poor kidnapped baby spiders. When I got there, I couldn't see any baby spiders anywhere. I looked all over the place, but there weren't any spiders in that cave. Huh, that's weird. You fell for my trap, Spidey. Ha 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 ha. The green goblin jumped out from behind a rock. There aren't any baby spiders here. It was a lie. But I knew that would get you to come here. Poor little hero with no one to save. Too bad, so sad. You're scum, green goblin. Oh, you wound me. You're running out of time, Spidey. Too bad you won't be able to save your buddy Spin before I blow him up. And when I'm done, I'll go to your base in the forest and blow that up too. That's right, I know where you've been hiding. Why are you doing this? Because I can. Wish I could stay and chat, but I've got to run. I'll leave you with some company though. Oh, minion. A huge earth elemental came into the cave. Bye, Spidey. The green goblin ran away and disappeared, leaving me alone with the earth elemental. He looked pretty tough. Uh-oh, I had no choice. If I wanted to get out of there and get back to my base, I was gonna have to fight him. On days 50 to 53, I did my best to fight the Earth Elemental. He was a lot bigger than me, but I wasn't about to back down or let myself get scared. I stared him down and got ready. The Earth Elemental ran at me and knocked me back into the cave wall. But luckily, I had my armor on and it didn't take too much damage. I jumped back onto my feet and ran at the Earth Elemental with my sword. I got a few good hits in before he knocked me back again. Next, I climbed up onto a rock and shot an arrow at him. It hit, and while he was recovering, I jumped back down and rushed up to deliver a finishing blow. He went down, and I was the winner! Woohoo! I did it! I really am turning into a superhero! Wait, what's this? There was a book on the ground. I picked it up and started to read. The Notes of Norman Osborn. I hate spiders so much. One day I'll find a way to get rid of every spider in the world. And then I can finally be happy once they're gone. I'm so glad I found this underground cavern to build my laboratory and basin. It's the perfect place to do my work. So the Green Goblin hates spiders. That's why he's after me and why he took spin. That's despicable. So his lair is in an underground cavern. There's a drawing of a map here showing where it is. I'm one step closer to defeating him once and for all. On days 54 to 57, I returned to the forest and started making my way back to the base. I've got to tell my friends what I've learned. But as I was walking, I heard someone crying for help. I followed the sound and there were some baby spiders in a cage. Oh no, there really are some baby spiders in trouble. Hold on little guys, I'll save you. I ran to let them out of the cage, but I couldn't find a key. Then a phantom swooped down on me. I was ready though, and I slashed at it with my sword until it went down. I saw that the phantom dropped the key, and also a blast protection enchantment. Awesome! This will help keep me safe from the pumpkin bombs. I took the key and let the baby spiders out of the cage. Be free! Then I went back to my base to let the tarantulas know that I managed to help out the baby spiders. Then I told them all about what I found out about the green goblin and his lair. I showed them the map and they recognized where the caverns were. They promised to help me find the caverns when I was ready to finally have my showdown against the villain. On days 58 to 62, I decided to plant some more crops so that we could have more food at the base. I went into the forest and gathered melons, then planted a bunch of melon seeds next to my wheat. Next, I decided it was finally time to upgrade my gear again. I went back down into the mine where I found my iron and started looking for some diamonds. It took a while and a lot of hard work, but finally I found some. Sweet! Time to craft some diamond gear! I was able to use the new materials to craft a diamond sword. After that was done, I expanded the base and added some more rooms, including a bedroom for Spin. After all, he's gonna need somewhere to stay when I finally rescue him. On day 63 to 66, the squirrels came up to talk to me. They told me that I might be able to find some useful materials at the stone shores. So naturally, I decided to head out there and see what I could find. When I arrived there, I couldn't see much of anything that would help me beat the Green Goblin. I was starting to feel discouraged. Then, I saw a stone monster coming toward me. Oh no, I guess I have to fight this guy now. But to my surprise, he didn't want to fight. He just wanted my help getting rid of a mean mutant creeper that took over the cove and killed his uncle. 
Ben! I'm so sorry that happened! Of course I'll help! I asked him to show me where he last saw the mutant creeper, and he pointed me in the right direction. A hero's work is never done! I guess with great power comes great responsibility! But I'm ready for it anyway! On day 67 to 70, I traveled to the part of the cove that the mutant creeper had taken over. I could get more fighting experience and help someone at the same time. Just another day of being a superhero. Come on out, you mean mutant creeper. I'm here to dispense some justice. As soon as it heard me, the mutant creeper came out of hiding and rushed at me to attack. It came at me and started hitting me, but I countered with my sword and my armor protected me from the damage. I knew I had to defeat it before it had a chance to charge up or explode. So I had to work fast, faster than I ever had before in a fight. It was hard, but I managed to take down the mutant creeper before it could blow up. Phew, that was a close one. Then I went back to the stone monster. That mutant creeper won't be bothering you ever again. All in a day's work for an up and coming superhero. On day 71 to 74, I traveled to the desert to gather some sandstone. As I was walking, I noticed an unusual rock formation. It spelled out, if you're enjoying this adventure, find more Zozo videos by searching for Zio, Zio. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Wow, nature really is amazing. Now back to what I was doing. Having a nice little desert stroll, eh, Spidey? The green goblin suddenly appeared. I wasn't expecting to fight you so soon, but I guess there's no time like the present. Watching you lose will be a gift. I drew my sword and got ready to fight. The green goblin tossed a pumpkin bomb at me and I had to dodge, but I got caught in the blast. Ouch, I lost a few hearts. I hate to admit it, but I'm still not strong enough. I need to get out of here. So that I would live to fight another day, I ran away as fast as I could before he could attack again. That was a close one. On day 75 to 78, I ran back to my base with some of the stone I managed to gather before the green goblin attacked me. I built a stone wall around the whole base. Awesome, this is looking great. At least something good came out of my trip to the desert. When I finished building the wall, Harry the rabbit came up to me. Zozo, I found something and I wanted to give it to you as a present. Thanks for everything you've done for me. You're a great friend and a real hero. Here you go, it's a cobweb. Whoa, thanks. I took the cobweb and it reminded me of my spidey strength and everything I had accomplished so far. I felt myself growing bigger and I gained three more hearts. On day 79 to 84, I decided to try out my new strength and bigger size by fighting some bad guys. If I wanted to push myself, a good way to do that would be to fight in the cold. So I went out to the snowy tundra to look for some mobs I could fight to keep everyone a little bit safer. I didn't have to look for very long before I found some gremlins bullying a snowy goat. Hey, stop that! Who's gonna stop us? Me! Oh yeah, we're so scared! They didn't know how much stronger I was, so they weren't ready for how much better I was at fighting. It didn't take long before I beat them. I asked the snowy goat if he wanted to come back to my base and stay there for a while. No thanks, I'm good. Could you walk me home though? It's just near here. Sure, so I walked with the snowy goat until we reached his house. You seem like a nice kid. Here, take this. Maybe it'll be of some use to you. Then he gave me a vine lasso. This is great, thanks. Now I can attack the green goblin from a distance. Saving people is its own reward, but it's also pretty nice to get a gift every now and then. On days 85 to 89, I went back to my base. When I got there, I saw there were gremlins attacking. Let's burn this place down before Spidey gets back. Too late, I'm already here. Uh-oh. The gremlins ran away, but I chased after them. Hey, I've gotten faster. Before too long, I had almost caught up to them, but I was stopped by the Ragnarok. Please help, those nasty gremlins stole my falconry hood. I need it for my favorite eagle. Don't worry, I'll get it back for you. Using my newly increased speed, I chased after the gremlins and caught up to them. Once I did, I beat them quickly and grabbed the falconry hood to take back to the Ragnarok. Here you go. Thank you so much. It's what I do. On days 90 to 94, I followed the gremlin footprints into the deep forest. This must be where they were hiding out before they attacked my base. Oh look, it's Spidey. Come to lose another fight. There was a gremlin chef waiting for me. Do I know you? Oh, but you should. I'm the Green Goblin's top henchman. 
the guy who handles all of his biggest problems. And you're a pretty big problem. A bug that needs to be squashed. He looked pretty tough, but I wasn't about to back down from this fight. I had to prove that I could take on the Green Goblin, so I needed to beat his right-hand man first. Let's do this! On days 95 to 97, I fought as hard as I could against the Gremlin Chef. At first, it was not going very well. He was dodging all of my attacks, one after another. Man, this guy's tough! Might as well give up now, Spidey. You'll never beat me, and you'll never beat the Green Goblin! But I thought about Spin and everyone else who the Green Goblin was putting in danger, and I knew I couldn't give up. I grabbed the vine lasso and threw it at the Gremlin Chef. It caught him! I was able to get him still enough to land a hit, and then the fight started to turn around. Finally, I knocked him down for good! As I was getting ready to leave, I noticed that he dropped something on the ground. Cave centipede leggings! I decided to put them on and see what they would do. I went back to my base and realized I could now climb up walls. Wow. This is perfect. I'll be able to use this to avoid the Green Goblin's pumpkin bombs and be faster than him. This is just what I needed. On day 98, I was back at my base and practicing climbing walls with my new cave centipede leggings. When I stopped to take a break, Harry came up to talk to me. I just wanted to say, you've turned into an amazing hero, Zozo. I'm so glad I met you. If anyone can beat the Green Goblin, it's you. Thank you. Next, May came up to see me. She brought me some diamond armor. I spent the last few days making this for you. I hope you can use it when you take on the Green Goblin. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Then the squirrels and the tarantulas thanked me for everything I had done for them. The tarantulas said that even though I wasn't a real spider, they considered me one of their own anyway. It really meant a lot to me. I was feeling braver and stronger than ever, with all of my friends by my side. On day 99, I asked the tarantulas to give me directions to the Green Goblin's underground lair. They told me where to go, and I headed out. It was now or never. As I was making my way toward the caverns, a cockroach scuttled past me. You can do it! Thanks, cockroach. I wasn't sure how she knew what I was doing, but I appreciated the encouragement anyway. Finally, I reached the Green Goblin's cavern lair, but the outside was crawling with Green Golem standing guard. Oh no, how am I gonna get inside? I'll help you. It was the walrus I saved from the octopus. I'll take care of these guys. You get inside and get to the Green Goblin. On day 100, it was finally time for me to face off against the biggest, baddest villain around, the Green Goblin. I was pretty scared, but I also knew how far I'd come and how many people believed in me. So you made it. Such a shame you came all this way just to die. He threw a pumpkin bomb at me, but I dodged it and climbed up a nearby wall. I learned some new tricks, Goblin. They won't be enough to beat me. We'll see about that. From my place on the wall, I shot an arrow at him. He dodged it, but I jumped down and swung at him with my sword, and it hit him. Then I ran back up the wall and got ready to attack from a distance again. I wouldn't shoot any more arrows at me if I were you. Look what I have. And he had Spin there with him, tied up. I had to get Spin out of the way so he wouldn't get hurt when I attacked the Green Goblin. I thought quickly and used my vine lasso to pull Spin toward me and out of the way just as the Green Goblin threw another pumpkin bomb. Then I remembered, I had the explosive bottle. I could beat the Green Goblin at his own game. Let's get out of here, Spin. Running away, are you? Nope, just getting far enough to do this. I threw the explosive bottle at the Green Goblin. Then I got out of there as fast as I could. Boom, the cavern exploded and I knew the Green Goblin was gone once and for all. I finally had my friend back and the land was saved. All thanks to your friendly neighborhood Zozo. On day one, I spawned in as Iron Man. And look, I'm not a baby. I'm all powered up. I flew around firing lasers. This was really cool. These zombies have met their match. Time to say goodbye. I blasted the zombies out of the way. They were no match for the might of Iron Man. Once they were all destroyed, I was floating over the forest, scanning the area. Suddenly, something hit me out of nowhere. What was that? I didn't see who it was, but I heard a voice. Say goodbye to your power. I had hit the ground, but managed to survive. But look, now I only have five hearts. I had to hurry and leave the area, though. Whoever that was could come back. Later, as I was escaping through the forest, a group of zombies came running up to me. I know how to handle these guys, but that was when I had my suit and powers. I didn't stand a chance now. I had no choice but to run away. Oh, I can't 
believe someone caught me off guard. They better watch out, because I'll stop at nothing to get my power back. But that was another day, so I settled in for the night. On day two, I woke up all alone, still feeling weak without my powers. I had to figure out who was out to get me. I've got quite the mission ahead of me. I'm going to be building and making all kinds of really cool things. But before I can do that, I need to start with the basics. I went outside and got right to work hunting trees. With the wood I had collected, I then made a crafting table. Using the crafting table and my leftover wood, I made myself some wooden tools, including a sword. Time to find some lunch. I went outside and soon came across a rabbit. That's going to have to do for now. I chased it down and got its meat. I might be trapped in the wilderness with no powers, but that doesn't mean I have to eat raw meat. As I took a look around, I soon came across a village. In the middle of the village was a campfire. Let's get cooking. I laid down my rabbit meat and let it sizzle. Soon, I had some cooked meat. I took a bite and was feeling much better. Suddenly, I realized what kind of village it was. It was a pillager village. Uh-oh, time to run. The pillagers chased me, but I managed to get away without losing my life. Later that evening, I took the simple supplies I had collected to start making myself a house to stay in. If those pillagers found me, at least I would have some walls to protect me. Soon, the hut was complete, and I settled in for the night. On day three, I awoke to a knock on the door. Who could that be? I opened the door and saw it was Captain America. Or well, I guess it was just Steve Rogers. He wasn't looking so good. Steve, what's wrong? You're not looking like your normal fit self. I was worried something had happened to you. I see now I was right. Your friend Iron Monger is to blame for this. I was minding my own business when he suddenly came out of nowhere. I don't know how he did it, but he managed to take away all of my powers. We might not be strong enough to help him right now, but we need to hurry and warn the others he's coming for him. That's a good point. Let's stick together while we figure this out. Steve agreed, and so we figured it would be good to start building a proper base. We did some scouting around and soon found a nice cliffside that would work perfect. I didn't have my powers, but I could still get shipments of stuff sent to me. After a bit, an express delivery with all the supplies we'd need showed up, and we got to work. Building a house on a cliff like this reminded me of my mansion in Malibu. It wasn't going to be quite like that, but I was hoping to eventually make something just as impressive. Soon, the beginning of our base was complete. Thanks for your help, Pete. We'll let you know if anything else comes up. On days four to five, Steve came over to talk. He wanted to know if I knew where any other superheroes were. Sorry, buddy, I don't. I really wish I did, though. Well, you're a pretty smart guy, right? Is there something you could invent? I thought it was a good question, but nothing came to mind. I stared at my empty crafting table when suddenly I had an idea. Oh wait, maybe that could work. I headed out to the caves to gather the materials I would need. If I could just get everything I would need, this special item would be the perfect solution to our problem. By the time I had made it into the deepest part of the cave, I had already managed to make myself some iron gear. It was about to come in handy as I was suddenly attacked by a bunch of magma cubes. All right, box heads, you're just what I was looking for. I swung my sword and managed to take a few of them out. As they disappeared, they dropped some charged coal. Once the threat was taken care of, I also found some nearby palladium, which I happily mined up. All right, that's everything I'm going to need. Let's make this special item. I soon arrived back at the house and got right to it, smelting down the palladium into ingots. I also needed a compass, which Steve gave to me. At long last, the final pieces were starting to come together. I went to the crafting table and used the palladium, charged coal, and compass to make my special item, a superhero radar. Sure hope this works. Steve and I headed into another room, and I set the radar down in the center. I placed a lever on the wall and flipped it. The radar started to make a sound, and a purple line came out of it. That line is pointing us to a nearby superhero. Now we can help them. On day six to eight, I checked the radar again to get a clear direction of where to go. I told Steve to hang back at the base and keep an eye on the radar, just in case anyone else popped up on it. Let's go see who it's gonna be. I left the base and ran off in the direction the radar had indicated. Hopefully I could get to them in time. After a bit of traveling, I soon reached a village, but it looks like the place was abandoned. Hello, is there anyone here? Thought it was you stomping around. Black Widow had come out of nowhere. Natasha, I can't believe I found you. There's no time to explain, but I need you to come with me. Listen, I don't trust anyone that much, even you. You're gonna have to give me some kind of explanation. Okay, uh, Steve is back at my base, and you see neither of us have our powers anymore, so we've gotta hurry to get out of here, or the same will happen to you. Don't have your powers? Who or what did that to you? Iron Monger! It was an answer to her question, but also an exclamation. He had popped up out of nowhere. Black Widow had sprung into action, trying to fight him off. I was still too weak, though, and had to run away. Hang in there, Natasha! They continued to fight, but it was no use. Iron Monger was too quick, and managed to hit her with a special gun. He had taken away all of her special abilities. <laughs> I don't know what you two are up to, but knock it off. Go live normal lives like the ordinary people you are. Before he could do us any more harm, we ran away. I couldn't believe he was able to do it again. On days 9 to 10, Black Widow and I arrived back at the base. We met up with Steve. Natasha, it's good to see you. Wait, did something happen? It was Iron Monger. I had gotten there in time, but he showed up and was able to steal her power. Oh no, did you see where he went? No, we had to get out of there. I hate this feeling. I've never felt so useless. It's okay. Keep your head on straight. I need some time to clear my head. I decided to get to work, building Natasha her own place to stay at the base. 
It was good to have a project to keep my mind busy. I couldn't believe I was beaten by my own friend. Soon, Natasha's room was complete. On days 11 to 12, I went to check the machine and saw there was a new signal, but this time it was different. What is it? What does it mean? Not 100% sure. It's a new invention that even I don't understand completely. Well, if it's pointing to a friendly, it's worth a shot trying to save him. Yeah, I'm not so sure, Cap. What good are we as rescuers if we can't really rescue someone? Iron Monger is just going to show up again. You don't know that. And come on, you know there's more to this than just being the strongest. Huh. That's certainly something coming from you. I'll see what I can find. I left the base and headed in the direction the radar was pointing. As I looked around, I felt like I wasn't seeing anything. That's when I realized I was back at the place I had crashed on day one. Suddenly, I noticed something nearby on the ground. I picked it up. Jarvis, is that you? What are you doing out here, buddy? Hello, sir. I'm delighted to see you have found me. So am I. How are you? I am here, but I am damaged. I am sorry for the loss you have suffered. So am I, buddy. But hey, do you think you can help? You've got all that information from my suit stored in your memory, don't you? I do. Or rather, I believe I do. My memory banks have been damaged, but it seems plausible they can be recovered. We will need to find the correct materials in order to recover it. Sure, sure, we can do that. I built a suit once. I can surely do it again. What's on that materials list of yours? Jarvis gave me the list of what I needed, and I headed off right away. On days 13 to 15, I arrived at some caves and headed on in to gather up the materials Jarvis had mentioned. First, I gathered up a bunch of iron, which was one of the main things I would need. Then I found some titanium, which was also going to come in handy. All right, that should be everything I need from here. I then left the cave and found myself in a herd of cows. I took some of the cows out in order to get some leather. That was all the ingredients I was going to need. Time to get back to the base. On day 16 to 19, I made it back to the base and went into my garage. It was crafting time. I put the iron in the furnace and started smelting iron ingots. Then it was titanium's turn, which started smelting into titanium ingots. While the ores were smelting, I then opened a nearby chest and grabbed some glass I had. Then at the crafting table, I added the glass to some iron and palladium to make myself a new arc reactor. At last, power! With my new palladium arc reactor, I could start to put together a new suit. I grabbed the ingots I needed out of the furnace, then used iron, titanium, leather, and the arc reactor to make myself a chest plate. Oh yeah, here we go. With the chest plate finished, I then used the rest of my materials and made the leggings, boots, and of course, the helmet. This isn't the best suit I've ever made. In fact, it's just as good as the first one I built in a cave in the desert, but it'll be better than having nothing. Hey, what have we got here? Steve and Natasha had walked into the garage. You built a new suit. It's gonna be so good for you. How did you pull it off? It was with the help of Jarvis. I found him at the crash site. His memory is damaged, but he remembered enough to help me build the suit. You think that's a good idea? Do you think it's not? No, no, it's great. It's just that you said Jarvis was damaged. I'd hate to see something go wrong. I assured him that Jarvis was working well enough to help me make the suits again without putting any of us in danger. That seemed like an excuse, though. Steve was probably just jealous I was getting my powers back, and he wasn't. Before I could say anything else, though, Natasha mentioned that she and Steve had gotten more food and stored it in the kitchen. All that crafting had made me hungry. I went over there to cook up some steak. This is going to be much better than Wild Rabbit, that's for sure. When the steak was ready, I scarfed it down. Delicious! I then went and started to make some more upgrades to the base. I was a man of luxury, so I decided the house needed a swimming pool. I picked a good spot and got the thing installed. All this building has given me an idea for one more big project. I headed out and got to work building a statue. These were dark times, and there was always one thing that could be a light in the darkness. Let me know what you think I'm building. Soon, the first part was complete. On days 20 to 22, I heard a notification go off on the radar, telling me another superhero had been found. I went and told Steve and Natasha the good news. They both wanted to come with to find who it was, but I told them it might be good for just me to go, given that I was the only one who had regained any of my power. As I put my suit on, I saw my health increase to eight hearts. I was also stronger and had a flamethrower attack. It was time to help our fellow superhero. As I got closer to the place the radar was pointing me to, I saw a large tower in the middle of the forest. I knew just who I'd find inside. As I reached the top, I could see Doctor Strange was there. Steven, be on your guard. Iron Monger is running around stealing everyone's power. What? He immediately got ready to fight. It was just in time, too, as Iron Monger came flying over, firing down on us. Huh, the good doctor. I think you've got just what I'm looking for. Doctor Strange was ready, though, and he started to put up a good fight. Iron Monger was going to have a much harder fight this time. I may have spoke too soon, though, as Iron Monger managed to land a hard hit, knocking out Doctor Strange. Iron Monger lifted his weapon and started draining Doctor Strange's power. I had to do something. Oh, no, you don't. Even though I wasn't super strong, I charged in and managed to stop Iron Monger from taking all the power. Problem was, he was now focused on me. Doctor Strange was back in the fight, though, and together we put up a good fight. In the end, we managed to hurt Iron Monger enough that he backed down. This isn't the last you've seen of me. He flew off. Steven, are you okay? I still have some of my powers, but I'm definitely weaker than before. I need to go rest. Doctor Strange opened a portal and walked through it. Huh, well, that was a quick exit, but at least we could stop him from losing 
losing everything, I better get back to the base and see who else we can help. On days 23 to 26, I was on my way back to the base when Jarvis piped up with some helpful information. Sir, my sensors are indicating a lot of silver nearby. Huh? I think that could help. Jarvis then told me what direction to go, and I headed there right away. As I arrived at the location he was sending me to, I didn't see anything. Are you sure this is the right place? There doesn't seem to be anything here. The silver may be beneath something, but I am 99% sure it is here. Well, guess I better start breaking blocks. I started breaking things as I looked around and soon saw an entrance to a dungeon. What is this all about? As I went deeper into the dungeon, I ran into a bunch of piglins. You piggies better watch out. That's when I noticed that they had all kinds of material stored down here. I hope you guys don't mind if I use some of this stuff. As I fought my way through the gang of piglins, I noticed that they dropped silver ingots. There, sir. The silver I was detecting. I happily picked the silver up and continued to fight the piglins. There were hoglins around as well, and they were a tough challenge. But I was up for the fight and soon made it to the dungeon's boss. A piglin brute with armor. You look strong, but I'm stronger. It turned out I was right. The piglin brute was really strong after all. He knocked me back, but I stayed in the fight. He wasn't going to get the better of me. After a long fight, I finally took him out. Huh, he didn't drop anything. But look, a chest. I went over to the chest, which was filled with silver. This should be more than enough. I hurried back out of the cave. On days 27 to 31, I arrived back at my base. I met back up with the team to tell them the good news. Guys, I was able to find Doctor Strange, and together we were able to fight off Iron Monger. Doctor Strange was weakened, but he was able to keep his powers. Everyone was really excited to hear the good news and couldn't believe Iron Monger had shown up again. Everyone, that is, except Steve. He kept his powers, huh? Well, uh, good for him, I guess. I didn't know why Steve wasn't excited like everyone else. He really must be jealous someone else got to keep their powers. I left the room and went to work on a new set of armor. With all the new silver I'd collected, I was going to be able to build an even better suit. I took my time making each set, and soon I had a full set of Iron Man Mark II armor. Oh yeah, now this is what I'm talking about. With my new suit on, I noticed I had more health than before. I still couldn't fly yet, but I could jump a little higher and felt stronger too. I showed it off to the gang, and everyone was really impressed. If I kept finding more materials, I would be back to full strength in no time. I had to find more materials. On days 32 to 35, I decided to see what else Jarvis could find for me. I'm thinking of adding some more weapons to the suit. What do you think it can handle? Scan show is not strong enough to handle your repulsive cannon, but there is something else that might work. We'll have to travel far away, but I believe it will be worth it. Show me the way. Jarvis explained the way to go, and eventually we made it to an entirely new biome. All right, Jarvis, what direction? Down, sir. It looked like it was time to dig. I think I knew what he had in mind. I kept digging and digging and soon made it into a magma chamber. Let me guess, we need some lava. No, sir. We're searching for a very specific mop. It should be here. I started to explore. Could you tell me what I'm looking for? Just then, I almost ran into a monster. It was a mutant blaze. Yikes, thanks for the warning. Sorry, sir, but my sensors aren't quite as sharp down here. The mutant blaze's fire attacks were strong, but my new armor was doing its job. I was taking much less damage than I normally would have. I'm gonna put you out, Firehead. I kept on swinging and at long last defeated the Blaze. As he disappeared, I saw he had dropped a Blaze Core. The Blaze Core, that is just what we need, sir. On days 36 to 39, I made it out of the hole and headed back towards the base. As I arrived back at the base, I went to the crafting area and got right to work on the new suit attachment. Using the Blaze Core, I was able to make myself a flamethrower. Oh yeah, I'm starting to heat up now. I called the others over and showed them my new toy. Whoa, that new flamethrower is so hot right now. Natasha was really excited about it, but Steve, less so. No surprise there, he was just jealous. On days 40 to 43, I heard the power detector going off again. It must have found another superhero. Maybe with my new gear, I can even defeat Iron Monger this time. I let the others know that I would head out by myself again. Until they could get their powers, it just didn't make sense to put them in harm's way. I would handle everything. I set off in search of the superhero, and soon found myself in a thick forest. Hello, is there anyone around here? I kept shouting and looking around, but couldn't find anyone. All I saw were a bunch of bats flying around. Suddenly, they attacked me. What the? Get away from me! Using my new attacks, I managed to fight off the bats, but then I was attacked by some wolves. This forest is crazy! What's going on around here? The wolves snapped their teeth and swung their claws, but I was able to keep them away and knock them out. I still don't see anyone, but it's starting to get late. I better build a shelter for the night. I soon found a nice clearing and got right to work building a shelter. After a bit, my camp was set up. Time to get some sleep. I'll keep looking in the morning. On days 44 to 49, I woke up in the middle of the night to a rumbling sound. What was that? I ran outside and saw there was a huge castle that had appeared out of nowhere. Well, nothing else to do but take a look. 
I ran into the castle and was suddenly attacked by a whole bunch of spooky mobs. There were bats and all kinds of skeleton creatures. I had to fight for my life. Back off, you undead creatures. You'll never take me alive. I kept fighting my way through the castle until finally I saw something different than the mobs. It was Blade. Blade, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I've tracked a vampire to this castle and I'm so close to finally beating him. I've come to warn you. Iron Monger is going around stealing power from superheroes. You've got to get out of here. Thanks for the warning, but I've come too far to quit. I don't see Iron Monger anywhere, so I think I have time to finish my mission. Well, let me help. Together we can get it done even faster. We soon noticed a coffin and walked up to it to take a look. We opened it, but it was a trap. Oh no, what is this? I can't move. Me either. Jarvis, clear this gas out of my suit. Jarvis got right to work, but he wasn't quick enough. Iron Monger had shown up. Huh, stay still. This won't hurt at all. Iron Monger used a special item and was able to take away Blade's powers. Jarvis had just cleared the gas from my suit, though, and I was ready to fight. I thought I told you to keep out of this. Iron Monger didn't stick around to fight me, but instead released the vampire before flying away. Without his powers, Blade was in for a real fight. Come on, Blade, I'll help you. Blade and I got to work swinging at the vampire. Even without his powers, Blade was a good fighter, getting lots of hits in. He wasn't good enough, though, and the vampire was able to really hurt him. You'll pay for that. I started attacking him even more than before and could tell I was starting to win. When he was at his weakest, Blade jumped forward and knocked him out with a stake for good. Thanks for your help. I couldn't have done this without you. Here, take this stake. You never know when it could come in handy. Thanks. I'll be sure to keep it close. I'm sorry about your powers. How about you come back to my base with me and we can figure this out? That sounds like just what I need right now. On days 50 to 53, Blade and I returned to the base. Then we met up with Natasha and told her what had happened. I'm sorry to hear it didn't work out this time. It sounds like he's getting smarter. I'm sorry too. But hey, where's Steve? Huh? Oh, he said he had some errands to run and left. He didn't tell me what those errands were. Huh, that's odd. Mm -hmm. Just then, Steve came back to the base. Sorry about that. I was just collecting some more materials to upgrade the base. I thought you could use some new materials for our new guest. That was a fair point. He was right, too. Blade needed a place to stay. Using some of the materials Steve had gathered, I was able to put together a room for Blade. Steve had also mentioned wanting a training room, so I got to work on that. Just because they had lost their powers didn't mean they couldn't stay in shape. Soon, everything was complete. On days 54 to 57, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. I decided I needed to talk to Natasha in private. Hey, I wanted to ask, has Steve been acting strange to you? Now that you mention it, he has. I haven't seen him do anything strange specifically, but he doesn't seem like he's been his normal self. I usually try and let people just do their own thing. You see, the thing is, Iron Monger always seems to show up right around the same time I do. I'm not saying Steve is somehow tipping him off, but I want to be sure he's not involved. Say no more. The next time you guys go, I'll keep an eye on him. That would be strange, but we'll feel better if we can rule it out. Thanks, Nat. I appreciate it. I then reached out to Jarvis to help with the next stage of rigging up the superpower detector. If Steve was really tricking us, I needed to get the super detector to trick him. Jarvis said he knew what I needed to get, but there were some special items I needed to collect first. Let's get exploring. On days 58 to 62, Jarvis led me to a cave that was filled with spiders. I was pretty strong at this point, and these spiders were no match for me. I easily knocked them out of the way. Aha! There's the gold ore you wanted me to get. I quickly mined up all the gold I needed, then hurried back to the base. There, I crafted some special wiring out of gold and took it to the superpower detector. After I attached the new wiring, the detector started to go off. Everyone came running into the room. The detector found another super. Hang tight, guys. I'll go get them and help them out. Everyone agreed, and as I went to leave, I gave Natasha a nod to let her know the plan was on. She nodded back. I soon reached a mountaintop where the detector was pointing me to. Of course, no one was here, but I needed to put on a good show. Oh, hey, Thor. I can't believe you're here. Just then, Iron Monger popped out. Aha. Uh -huh. Huh? I was ready for him and gave him a good hit. What the? There's no Thor here. I can't believe I've been betrayed and tricked like this. What do you mean betrayed? How did you know I would be here? Uh, I've said too much. Iron Monger flew away. Something was definitely going on. I hurried back to the base. As I arrived, I could see Natasha was waiting for me. You're not going to believe this. What happened? After you left, I followed Steve just like you asked. Once he had gotten far enough away from the base, I saw him pull out a communication device. I got close enough to hear who he was talking to. It was Iron Monger. You're right. I can't believe this. We've got to confront him right away. On days 63 to 66, I headed into the base to find Steve. I soon found him. Hey, you weren't gone for very long. Did you find anyone? There was no one there, but... You probably already knew that. What do you mean? How could I have known that? Because you've been in contact with your friend, Iron Monger. Give it up, Steve. We know. You don't know anything. Just then, Steve started to transform. Suddenly, Steve was gone, and Mandarin was standing there. Mandarin, so it's been you all along. I should have known it was someone evil trying to trick us. Well, you just aren't very smart, are you? You've been leading us to superheroes this entire time. What do you want with us? I've been absorbing all of the powers. Soon, you'll be unable to stop me. 
I was hoping I could wait for you to build another super suit so I could steal its powers too. But no matter, you'd never stop me. I leapt forward to attack him, but he was right. He was really strong. He knocked me out of the way and was able to escape. He wasn't fully powered up yet, but if he was this strong already, we were going to be in real trouble. On day 67 to 70, I went to talk to Natasha and Blade. I couldn't believe I had been tricked. I apologized to them for leading Mandarin right to them. Don't worry about it. You were trying your best. Now that we know who we're really up against, we have a better chance of stopping him. Thanks, Nat. I appreciate the support. And speaking of support, I appreciate all of you watching too. After this video, search for more Zozo. Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. Sir, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I've managed to repair my memory banks and unlocked a new design for another part of the suit. Oh, that's great news. What do we need to build it? It looks like we'll be needing some diamonds, but I'm not detecting any on my scanner. You need diamonds? I haven't seen any underground, but while I was tracking the vampire, I stayed in a village full of them. I'll tell you where to go. Blade explained where the village was, and I set off to find it. I soon arrived and saw that Blade wasn't lying. There were diamonds everywhere here. The villagers had all kinds of diamond tools and armor. Hey there, nice armor. Do you guys have any extra diamonds you could spare? I might have some, but I can't just give you them for free. That's understandable. How much do they cost? You know, we've had quite a bit of a problem here, and if you can solve that problem, I'll give you everything we can spare. Sounds like it must be a pretty big problem then. Yeah, there's a monster that has started living in our diamond mine, and we haven't been able to go in there for weeks. Take care of that monster for us, and we'll give you our spare diamonds. <sighs> okay, I'll do it. Tell me where to go. On day 71 to 74, I arrived at the diamond mine, but the place looked abandoned. I guess the monster really cleared this place out. Better see what I can find. I went into the cave, but didn't see any diamonds. I didn't see anything, for that matter. The place was super dark. As I went deeper into the mine, I placed torches to help me see. The mine kept going deeper and deeper. I was starting to wonder if it would ever end. At long last, I reached what seemed to be the final room. There's nothing here. Maybe the monster left or something. Just then, I noticed that the torches I had placed along the wall were starting to go out. One by one, they broke, getting closer and closer to me. Suddenly, the vampire from before appeared. What? I thought we defeated you. The vampire smirked and then attacked. He was even stronger than before. And this time, he had some tricks up his sleeve too. He burst into a ball of smoke, summoning a group of bats. What in the world? This is crazy. The vampire had disappeared. I had to defeat these bats. I ran around trying to cut down as many as I could. Suddenly, I felt a hit. The vampire had reappeared. Get out of here, Dracula. I still couldn't believe this guy was still around. But I guess it's true. Vampires can never really be defeated. That's when I remembered. The stake. The vampire was getting weak now, and it was time to finish him off. I grabbed my stake and hit him, finishing him off. He would be back eventually, but at least I could get my diamonds in the meantime. I hurried back into the village and met up with the villager. It's done. The monster is gone. Now let's see about those diamonds. Amazing, you saved us. Here, you can have everything we have to spare. The villager tossed out a single diamond. I gave him a look. I thought you said you were going to give me all the diamonds you have to spare. I did. We only have one diamond to spare. Jarvis piped up. That should be all we need, sir. Mm, thanks. Well, here, you guys might need this. I tossed him the stake and headed off, back to the base. On day 75 to 78, I arrived back at the base. It was time to make what Jarvis had remembered. As I went to the crafting table, Jarvis told me what I needed to do to craft a new repulsor. It wasn't my full suit, but at least it was a stronger weapon than before. Just then, Natasha came into the room. You've got your repulsor up and running? That's great. Yeah, problem is, I don't know where to go to find Iron Monger or Mandarin. Yeah, I was thinking about that. When I heard Steve, or I guess Mandarin, talking to Iron Monger, I thought I could hear some machines in the background. Blade came into the room. Machines? There's a factory not too far from here. Maybe he's hiding out in there. It's worth a shot. I'm not sure where else to look. They all agreed, and I decided that before I would leave, I would go ahead and finish the statue. It took a lot of hard work to get it done, but I soon had it all finished in no time. So what do you guys think? Did you guess what it was correctly? On day 79 to 84, I soon arrived at the factory Blade had told me about. I'm not sure if this is right, but we'll find out. As I got closer, I was suddenly attacked by a group of zombies. If there were zombies around here, there was a good chance Iron Monger or Mandarin were around too. I managed to fight through the wave, but avoided using my repulsor. In case Iron Monger was watching, I didn't want him to know I had it. Soon, all of the zombies zombies were defeated. On days 85 to 89, I entered into the base. That's when I saw Iron Monger standing amongst a bunch of zombies trapped in cases of liquid. What are you doing? I knew you would show up here eventually. I'm doing what needs to be done. You superheroes think you can just do whatever you want. Zombies can be controlled, so I'm taking your powers and giving them to them. Then I will control all the powers on Earth. Oh, I see. You don't want to stop superpowers. You just want to be in charge of them yourself. I won't let you get away with this. Huh. You've been trying to stop me this entire time and have never beat me. 
Today, I will finish you for good. We'll see about that. Ironmonger flew up in the air as a door opened, letting zombies into the room. There were a ton of them. Uh-oh, I better take care of these first. I ran around the room, trying to take out as many zombies as I could. This was a tough fight with so many things going on at once. I had to defeat Ironmonger, though. My friends were going to need all of their powers back. Where is Mandarin hiding? You'll never find him, because you'll never leave here. Ironmonger and I were now fighting each other directly, and it was getting intense. He hadn't expected all of my upgrades, though, and I was really hurting him. How did you get so strong? I thought I took everything away from you. A suit isn't a brain, and that's what's going to defeat you. I fired my repulsor at him and took him out for good. As he disappeared, I saw he had dropped some unique parts, which I picked up. Sir, we can use these materials to remake your strongest suit. Yes, now we just need to find Mandarin and get everyone's powers back. Let's do this. On days 90 to 94, I made it back to the base. I ran right over to Natasha and Blade to tell them the good news. I was able to defeat Iron Monger. The bad news is that he was trying to inject zombies with your powers. That's horrible. It's a good thing you beat him, though. Speaking of, any way to get our powers back? Before I left, I saw you had some kind of machine that must be storing your powers. If you guys go there, you may be able to get them back. Right on. Thanks for all of your help. You've got it. Now I've got to get to work returning to my final form. I rushed over to the garage as the other set off for the factory. Using the materials Iron Monger had dropped, I got to work building my final Mark III version of my armor. After a lot of hard work, my armor was restored. Yes, it's going to feel so good to fly again. I ran up the stairs of the house and over to a balcony. Here we go. I jumped off and nothing happened. I landed in the water below. Jarvis, what's going on? Sorry, sir, but while your suit has been restored, the flying capabilities still need some repairs. Don't you think you could have told me that before I jumped off the cliff? My apologies, sir. It's okay. No harm done. Now, where do we need to go? On days 95 to 97, Jarvis instructed me that we would be heading to the nether, so I got to work building a nether portal. I hadn't been able to get a diamond pickaxe, so I had to get creative. By using lava and some water, I managed to fashion a nether portal together. It took a bit to get it all done, but soon, I had my own nether portal ready to go. All right, Jarvis, show me the way. I stepped into the portal and soon found myself in the nether. This place always gives me the creeps. Let's make this quick. There was some quartz nearby, so I quickly ran over to it and mined it up. Luckily, that was all I needed, so with my pockets full, I jumped back into the portal. Back in the garage, I got right to work, crafting the flight module. It didn't take too long, and soon, it was all complete. I walked back towards the cliff, jumped off, and it worked. Yahoo! I'm a flying man once again! I took some time flying around, feeling good that I was finally powered up. Just then, Jarvis delivered some interesting news. Sir, the superhero detector at the base is going off. The signals are off the charts. I hurried back to the base and went into the detector room. The machine was going crazy. The signal is way too strong for it to be Natasha and Blade getting their powers back. Mandarin must be up to something. It was time to take him down. On day 98, I headed off in the direction the detector was pointing. Not too much later, I saw a giant base rising out of the ground. This has to be Mandarin's base. Just then, I was attacked by a bunch of zombies. Oh no, he must be trying to do the same thing Iron Monger was. I've got to get to him, and quick. I was so strong that I knocked the zombies out of the way, no problem. But there was still a lot of them. I also couldn't help but notice some of them were strong than others. I had to hurry and get to the top. Out of the way, zombros. I kept firing my repulsor cannon until at long last, all of the zombies were defeated. I ran over to the stairs and started heading up to the top. As I got close, I passed a sign in the distance. Oh, subscribe. You should do that right now. And once this adventure is over, go look up some more of my other ones. Just search Zozo, Z-O-Z-O, -O, to find them. On day 99, I reached the top of the tower and saw Mandarin floating in the sky. Wait, how are you floating? <laughs> Impressive, isn't it? You're too late. I've absorbed your friend's powers, and now you'll never be able to defeat me. No, I don't believe it. I'm going to knock their powers out of you. Bring it on, rich boy. Mandarin started firing energy blasts at me, causing some big explosions. I returned fire, launching attacks with my repulsor cannon. I had to be careful, though. Getting caught in those explosions really hurt. The time of the superheroes is over, and the time of the supervillain has begun. I managed to get a hit in with my repulsor, which stopped his monologue. But suddenly, a bunch of yellow smoke appeared, and Mandarin was gone. Where did he go? Looking for me? Mandarin reappeared, launching more energy blasts. He could teleport now. This wasn't looking good. I had started to fly around, but this was tough. I was hanging in there, but I didn't know how long I could last. What's wrong? Am I too strong? Let me make this easier for you and finish this. There was another plume of yellow smoke, and Mandarin copied himself. I was getting attacked from all sides. Oh no, he's too strong. I was taking out some of his clones, but there was no way I could keep this up. I finally took out the clones, but took a heavy hit. One more hit, and it was all 
done for me. I removed my mask. I'm going to enjoy this. You have been a thorn in my side for too long. Suddenly, a portal opened and all of my friends came running through, including Doctor Strange and Captain America. Thought I ought to pay you back. This guy stole my face. That's America's face, not his. We were able to get our powers back. All thanks to you. Now let's return the favor. Well, 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 aren't we all just one big happy family? Well, you're too late. I'm not just as strong as all of you. I'm stronger. Mandarin cloned himself again, and we all started to fight. It was on now. He was still strong, but there was no way he could take us all down, because even though we might be equal in power, we had something he didn't. Friendship. No, it can't be. How can I be losing? We had defeated all of his clones and surrounded him in the center of the platform. Well, thanks for playing. Tell Ironmonger we say hello. No! I blasted him with my repulsor, destroying him for good. My friends and I all gathered together. Steve, I was wondering what had happened to you. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, the doctor here came and found me. By the time we met up with the other two, they had just gotten their powers. We came here right away. Just in time, too. Suddenly, another portal opened, and Hulk came through. Wait a second, this isn't where I was trying to go. Where's Abomination? Uh-oh, that Hulk sounds like me. Looks like me from another video somehow wound up here. Can you help him get back? After this video is over, go watch my Hulk video. On day 100, we had all arrived back at the base. The world was safe once again, and everyone had their powers. But we would stay vigilant and keep an eye out. You never know when trouble could strike again. On day one, I spawned as a baby hoglin. Oh, I'm pretty adorable. But I only had three hearts. I was small, but I had a super strong sense of smell. I could smell everything I was seeing. Whoa. Great rivers of fire. I'm in the nether. Cool. Oh, look. There's a group of hoglins. That must be my family. I went over to them. They were nice and shared their crimson fungi with me. Life couldn't have been better. That is until a hungry illager came looking for some bacon. Run for cover, little Zozo. We'll take care of this. You're too small for battle. But I want to stay and fight. Leave it to the real warriors, you shroom sniffer. Bebop, knock it off. He just likes to pick on other hoglins. He's a bit of a bully. You will join us one day, but not today. You must grow bigger first. Now hurry before they turn you into lunch. Sir, yes, sir. I ran as fast as my little hooves could go when suddenly I was covered in purple smoke. I had no clue what was happening. Suddenly, I was dropped near a river in a green field with blue skies. This didn't look anything like my home. Where am I? I looked around and saw a squirrel with sunglasses on. Bro, you just dropped out of the sky. For real, for for real. I don't know where I am. This isn't the nether. No, little dude. This is the overworld. You must have gone through a portal or something. All I know, bro, is it got all purpley and then poof. There you were, dude. I was so confused. I didn't know what this girl was saying and I didn't know how I got into the overworld. Whoa, bro. Something's up. I started to see red. Blinking red. I felt weird. Something was happening to me. I was changing. You're going zombie, my dude. Zombie? The blinking red stopped and I could tell my whole body looked different. You could see my bones and my mane had gone flat. Oh no, I'm a Zoglin now. What will my family think? How will they want me back now? I guess it's kind of cool to be a zombie. 100% my dude. It's the gnarly bones for me. Well, any ideas what I should do now? My guess is to find a portal to take yourself home. I bet you could find one in the forest. Just be careful out there, little guy. Here, take this. He handed me a potion of strength. Ah. Only use it when you're really in a jam. Good luck, bro. I gotta go gather my nuts I dropped when you popped out of the Guy. Thank you, Mr. Call me Squeaks. Thanks, Squeaks. It was nice to meet a cool squirrel like you. He hopped away and I started towards the forest, passing by a river. My thoughts were suddenly interrupted by a shark that popped out of the river behind me. Luckily, I jumped out of the way just in time. Someone was feeling bitey today. I then continued banking my way into the forest. On day two, I wandered through the forest to find a portal. I wasn't sure where to go next, but that's when I remembered my nose never failed me. Even though I was a zombie, my nose was just as powerful. I took a whiff around. <laughs> Hmm, that's an interesting smell. I followed my nose to a llama eating some berries. I decided to ask her if she had seen the portal, but she just ignored me. Hey, I'm talking to you. The llama turned and spit right in my snout. Okay, you're asking for some drama, llama. I wasn't going to let her get away with spitting in my face. I ran at her full speed and attacked. Unfortunately, I was too weak to do any damage. I didn't even have a weapon. Oh, how sad. Why don't you cry? Wee, wee, wee. All the way home, little Zoglin. You're much too small to be on your own. Really cool, pick on someone smaller than you. Listen, I'd love to go home, but my home is in the nether and I can't get home without a portal. Oh, the nether? I heard they have great crimson fungi there. Yeah, they do. I pulled out a crimson fungi and flashed it at her. Okay, kid. Fine. I'll 
tell you where a portal is if you let me have that. How do I know you aren't lying? You'll just have to trust me. You spit in my face, and you want me to trust you? Tell you what, I'll give you one now and one later if you take me to the portal. She thought it over and finally agreed to the deal. The last portal I saw was up ahead at a waterfall. I threw her a mushroom and she chomped down on it. Mmm, a little spicy with some smoky flavor. I like it. All right, come on, follow me. On day three, we came to a clearing, and up ahead was a glistening waterfall against a big cliff. There it is. The portal is up ahead. This is where we part. Time to hand over the other half of that mushroom. I handed her the rest of my mushroom, and she gulped it down. You know, kid, you're not so bad. You're not so bad yourself, Llama. Thank you for showing me the way. Well, let's not get all mushy. Good luck, and try not to get in any more trouble. The Llama trotted off into the forest, and I headed towards the waterfall. It was so beautiful that I forgot to pay attention to my surroundings. Al popped a snake from the long grass. Mind if I slither on by? I guess the snake did mind. The snake was trying to strike me, but I was determined to get to the portal. I didn't have a weapon, but I had my tusks, and I was bigger than the snake. I hit him good and hard, knocking him out. Your history, snake. As he disappeared, I saw he left behind eggs. Oh, nice. I better hold on to these. The portal was just up ahead. I could see it now. Unfortunately, I could also see a pack of wolves. Please, I, I don't want any trouble. I just need to get back home through that portal. I can pay you in eggs? The horned enderman has commanded all zoglins to be taken to him. You're coming with us. Just then, a bunch of skulls came shooting at the pack of wolves. The wolves backed up, but stayed close, guarding the portal. Come with me if you wish to live. This dude was a little creepy looking. I'm sorry, who and what are you? I'm a wither. My name is Smithers. Now come on, those wolves are going to try and take you to the horned enderman. We have to get you out of here. I have no clue what you're talking about, but I don't want to be eaten by wolves. So yeah, let's go. On days four to five, I followed Smithers into the shadows of the jungle. You need to make some weapons, little Zoglin. Now is a good time. After that, I have a quest for you. I need you to find the Mushroom Field Islands. Only a special hoglin can find them. But I'm trying to get home. I need to get to the portal. If you find these islands, I will help get you home. For now, all the portals are being guarded. I think you are the Zoglin the Horned Enderman is searching for. Me? You got the wrong Zog. I'm just your average ham. Yeah, you might not be special, but we shall see. How will I know the way to the Mushroom Island? Follow your nose. If you really are the Chosen One, you will have extra strong smelling powers. With that, Smithers flew away. It left me with a million questions. And what was that about smelling powers? I always had a good nose, but no, I couldn't be the one they were looking for. One thing was for sure, I needed to be able to defend myself. I started mining wood, stone, and coal. Then I made myself a crafting table. After that, I made a bow, an axe, a sword, and a pickaxe. Take a look at me now. All will tremble before me. Just as I was really getting into being dramatic, I caught the scent of something nearby. I wasn't alone. I looked up and noticed eyes staring back at me. An ocelot jumped down from the tree. He crouched, getting ready to pounce. Easy, little kitty. You wouldn't want to eat me. I'm rotten and don't taste good. But the truth was, I was scared. Those claws were no joke. How would I ever be able to win this fight? Oh, wait! The potion! I quickly pulled out my potion of strength that Squeak gave me and drank it. I grew a little bigger and got extra hearts. It's a good thing I met that weird squirrel. The ocelot pounced as I tried to get out of the way. We kept swinging at each other until I was able to push him out of the way. Luckily, I noticed that there were some arrows nearby. I guess an explorer left them here. I hurried and got on my bow and then started firing. It didn't take too many hits, and I was able to take him out. So much for cats having nine lives. Just then, my nose picked up a different scent on the tree. Cocoa pods. Wow. Oh, these would be great for making a color or a snack for later. It was then that I could hear a crunching sound coming from somewhere in the jungle. I decided to follow the sound. I rounded some trees and saw a thicket of bamboo. It wouldn't be a bad idea to collect some of that. The crunching continued, and I soon saw a panda relaxing on the ground, enjoying some bamboo. I hope he wouldn't mind if I took some for myself. Hey there, I'm Zozo. Could I take some of that bamboo? The panda looked up at me and shrugged, then went back to munching. Sweet, that was easy. It was definitely a relief to come across an adorable animal that didn't want to attack me. I mined a good portion of the bamboo, but made sure to leave some for the panda. I was very excited about my new supplies. Goodbye, Mr. Panda. Thanks for the bamboo. On day six to eight, I decided I liked the jungle so much that I'd take a couple days to go jungle glamping. After all, who knew if that wither was even trustworthy? The mushroom fields could wait. I sniffed around for a good spot and went to sleep in a cavern. Later, I woke up and decided to explore some more. Hey, check it out, a wild patch of pumpkins. I'm pumped. This would be a cool spot to build my glamping base with my bamboo. I'm thinking a yurt would be cool. I even found some melon seeds while cutting down plants. I trotted happily to the patch and began to make my jungle yurt. This would be a great little place to sleep and hide from mobs. Once I had the outside done, I put some finishing touches inside, including some jungle plants. Then I put a little fence around the pumpkin farm, melon farm, and my yurt. I also built a small melon and pumpkin farm outside. Yurt, sweet yurt. Ouch! Something had just hit me. A monkey was in a tree. He was throwing stuff at me. Hey, knock it off! As you wish! I'll knock all the blocks off your little house thingy! It's a yurt, you uncultured baboon! Now stop! The monkey didn't stop. He just wanted to be naughty and aggravate me. Alright, enough monkey business. I grabbed my bow and fired a warning shot. 
that. The monkey screeched and swung off the tree. Hopefully he had learned his lesson. With the monkey gone, I could focus on some much needed dinner. Pumpkin chocolate bean cookies sounded good. I would better hurry. It was getting late and mobs would be showing up. I crafted the cookies and went outside to enjoy the mood. Hey, this is pretty peaceful. It's just me, the trees, these pumpkins, and that horned enderman over there. <gasps> a horned enderman! A very tall horned enderman was staring at me from outside the fence. Well, hello, little Zoglin, without a care. I am the horned enderman. No need to fear. You! You're that evil enderman trying to capture all the Zoglins, and you probably are the one who teleported me here. I searched for the perfect Zoglin, but as for this teleportation, that is the wrong accusation. You're very poetic for an evil jerk. And you are very cheeky for a Zog who is not very beefy. You are coming with me. Do not try and flee. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. There's nothing that won't make me win. Oh, look at that. He even got me rhyming. I whipped out my bow and shot at him, but he teleported and suddenly was right next to me. I pulled out my sword and tried to attack him with that, but it was no use. The Enderman punched me so hard that I was stunned. There was no way I could do anything to fight this guy. Just as I lost all hope, the Enderman was hit with a big rock in the head. Something kept hitting the Enderman with all sorts of objects. Eventually, he got fed up and teleported away. There was that crazy monkey sitting on the roof of my yurt. Whoa, you saved me. You chased the Enderman away by being annoying. Most impressive. I think we started off on the wrong foot. Would you like some pumpkin cookies? The monkey liked that idea and threw a banana at my head playfully. <laughs> Aren't you glad I didn't throw a rock? What a silly monkey. I'm glad he decided to come back after all. Soon the monkey left and I went to sleep. On days 9 to 10, I thought I'd sniff around to see if the mushroom field was anywhere nearby. I set off around the jungle. I didn't smell mushroom fields, but I did smell a village nearby. I figured I could sniff it out. Maybe there would be some shops. I exited the jungle and kept sniffing and walking until I finally found a village. I walked into the village and all the villagers were looking at me. They didn't seem too excited about me being there. I walked into a shop and the shopkeeper didn't want to sell me anything. He said Zoglins were dangerous to have around because it might bring the horned Enderman's cronies around. Man, this Enderman is ruining everything for me. I was about to leave the village when a chicken went flapping past me. The villagers were upset. They chased the chicken around, but it got away and ran out of the village. She is gone. The heavenly hen has left us. We will be cursed. Hey, uh, maybe I can help. You? What are you going to do besides bring the horned Enderman? Men around these parts. I've got a very sharp smelling nose. I can follow her scent and track her down. Very well. Find the heavenly hen. Okay, but if I do, I get to pick some things out of your shops for free, okay? Fine. Whatever you want. Please hurry. And whatever you do, don't look her in the eyes and don't threaten her or you will regret it. Okay, that's strange, but fine. I won't. I had seen some really cool armor in the shop, but I probably couldn't afford it. So this was a good deal for me. I headed back towards the jungle to find the chicken. On days 11 to 13, I trotted toward the jungle mountain. I climbed up a hill covered in foliage. It was kind of hard to see, so I started chopping down some of the jungle leaves. Whoa! Oof! The leaves were so thick, I didn't see the quarry below my feet. Oh no, I disturbed a nest of scorpions. Yuck, these guys were nasty. I'm in a real pinch. I tried to tell them that I meant no harm, but they were not going to leave me alone. I did not want to get stung. I swung my sword to get them to back off. Yikes, that was a close one. I jumped above them and pulled my bow out, hitting a few of them. I wanted to just get out of there, but the problem was, I smelt the chicken down there. Maybe she got eaten. But it was just then that I saw a mine shaft below. Maybe the chicken had hidden inside there. I'd have to take these guys out. One by one, I finished them off. Except for one. It was gold. And turned out to not be a scorpion at all. It was a scorpion-sized gold statue. I decided to enter the mine shaft and check the statue out. On day 14 to 16, I was inside the mine shaft and had a smell around. It didn't just smell like chicken. There was something else, too. Oh, jackpot! So many resources! But most importantly, iron! Something was a little creepy about this place. Okay, Zozo, ignore the creepy feeling and just keep my mining, just keep mining. After that amazing song, I created a crafting table and furnaces to smelt the iron I just collected. I had enough iron that I could craft myself some iron armor and tools really quick. Something told me I was going to need it. I continued deeper into the cave to find the chicken. Hold up, what's that? I pulled my axe out. It was a spider. But wait, it was another gold statue. What is going on here? I just need to find this chicken and get the creep out of here. Soon enough, from the shadows, crawled a mob of spiders. I knew my spidey senses were tingling. They weren't deterred. They just kept coming. One of the spiders hit me good. It was a big hit. I swung around like crazy and finished off all of the spiders. He left behind a bunch of webs, a crafting table, an iron sword, and some arrows and a slime ball. I guess some explorers must have left in a hurry. I collected them all and made a lead out of some of them. I kept walking down into the cave and eventually saw some lava. Across from the lava was that crazy chicken. You are lucky you aren't fried chicken by now. The chicken stared at me with angry eyes. My body felt weird. I suddenly remembered what the villager said about not staring at the chicken in its eyes. I tried not to look directly at it and started making a bridge across the lava over to the chicken. Listen, Miss Hen, I'm just trying to help you. I've got some cookies for you. I'll give you some if you follow me out of here. She didn't say anything because she was a chicken, but I assumed she was okay with this. She ate them and then followed me across my bridge. Well, that worked out. Come on, let's get you home. 
everyone is worried about you. On day 17 to 19, we had made it out of the cave and were on our way back through the jungle when the ground under my feet felt funny. It was so soft and squishy. Then I realized I was sinking. It was blue quicksand. Help! The chicken just stared at me blankly. She was no help. Quack, what's wrong? It was a group of parrots. I'm sinking. Quack, what are you sinking about? Oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. Okay, might have been about to die, but that was pretty punny. <laughs> nice one. Thanks, we have been working on the stand-up routine. Neat. Well, I'm sinking about how I need help getting out of here. We have the sinking feeling you are in some real trouble, but what can be done? Do you think you could pull me out of this quicksand with my lead? The quicksand had almost swallowed me up by this point. Sure thing, hand us the lead. They were able to pull me out just in time. Phew, that was a close one. Thank you for saving my life. Mark, no problem. I was just escorting this chicken home. Quack, quack, what chicken? I looked around and the hen was gone again. Oh no. I told the parrots thank you, but I had to run off to find her. I followed my nose. She was close, but so was an ocelot. Look out, chicken. The chicken stared at the ocelot with angry eyes. I took out my sword, but before I could do anything, the ocelot turned to solid gold. Did you do that, Miss Hen? I can see why you're so special now. She pecked at the ground. Come on, let's get you back home. On days 20 to 22, a fox was watching us run back to the village and tried to cut us off. Sorry, Fox, trust me, you don't want this chicken for dinner. I ran at him and punted him into the sky. I knew I was doing him a favor, better than dealing with Goldwinger over here. We made it back to the village and the villagers were super stoked. I was super stoked about picking out some items from the shop. Our sacred hen has returned. What is your name, Sir Zoglin? Zozo. Three cheers for Sir Zozo. Shucks, I just followed my nose. At the shop, I picked out diamond armor and some TNT. Mission accomplished. With my swanky new treasures in hand, I was ready to go back to my yurt. On the outside of the village, I was stopped by an iron golem who offered me a poppy. He told me his name was Geo. He was a super nice guy. I told him I had to get back to my yurt before it got much later. As I came out to my yurt, it had already gotten dark. Oh, just fantastic. My yurt is swarming with creepers and red-eyed spiders. It's a jungle out here. Time to test out this armor and explosives. The mob saw me and started coming for me, so I ran into the trees. I set the TNT on the ground and then punched it, running for my life. As the mobs came by, the TNT exploded. It didn't kill them all, but it took out a lot. I handled the rest of them with my weapons. With the mobs gone, I tried trotted back to my yurt. I checked on my melons. They were growing well. I'd harvest them tomorrow and then set out to find that mushroom island, or field, whatever you want to call it. On day 23 to 26, I woke up and went outside. To my surprise, Geo was standing around my garden. Huh? Hey there, Geo. How did you find me? Geo here, big boo. Geo come to save Zozo. That's super nice of you. I tested out some TNT on some mobs. Sorry to worry you. I explained to Geo that I had to go on a mission to find a mushroom island. Geo insisted on accompanying me. He said he could help protect me from the horned endermen. I agreed, then harvested my melons and pumpkins. I took a bite of the melons, and it helped me to grow some more. Ooh, check out these tusks. Wow. Then I went inside to get some more materials. After that, we were ready to set off. My nose led us out of the jungle and across some icy plains and glaciers. There were a lot of polar bears. I was relieved Geo decided to join me, because there's no way I'd be able to fend them off by myself. When some of them wanted to give us trouble, we gave them trouble right back. Geo was able to fling them up like pancakes. Hey Geo, want to build a snowman? I decided I might as well mine some snow while I was there. It might come in handy. I threw together some snow and a pumpkin head to make a snow golem. Geo clapped excitedly. Snow friend, snow friend. B -b 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 happy birthday. <laughs> yes, happy birthday to you, Ice Golem. My name is Zozo. This is Geo. What's your name? B -b -b Burr. Burr, huh? That checks out. Play with Burr. Sure, we can take some time to play. Hey, I know. What if we build a snow fort out of snow? Play. Burr, play. I made a little snow fort and we had a snowball fight. It was very fun, but Geo was a little too strong and hit Burr too hard, and he poofed into a giant pile of snowballs. Don't worry, Geo. Snowmen don't last forever anyways. We collected his snowballs and added them to our supply. At least he could always be with us now, in a weird sort of way. On days 27 to 31, we wandered to the seaside. The smell of Mushroom Island was super strong. I was led to the seashore. We looked out and saw an island with funny red trees. I think that's it, Geo. Now to get over there. I crafted a boat, but it wasn't big enough for Geo to come with me, so Geo agreed to hang out on shore until I came back. As I sailed closer, I realized the red trees were actually giant mushrooms. I started to drool. Someone was on the island already. It was Smithers. You found me. You you truly are the chosen one. Only a Zoglin with the strongest sniffer can find this secret place. Why does the Enderman want me? I will explain everything. Let's show you around first. I ran around the island exploring its resources. This ground was so spongy and bouncy. Oh, look, cows. Wait, those are mushrooms. That gave me an idea. A huge statue would be pretty cool in this field. I gathered up some supplies and started working on the first part of the statue. The cocoa beans would also be perfect for some brown dye. I'd want some red though too. I'd need to get some red flowers on the mainland. Smithers showed me the base he had made. It was a nice little cute. You know, Smithers, this is awesome, but are you okay with me doing some renovations? Just so it's big enough for all of us, including some of my friends I've met along the way. I mean, this is already a pretty elaborate cube, but okay, I'm cool with it. Great, I'll start tomorrow. On day 32 to 35, I decided to make the base look like a giant red mushroom with spots.
spots. I wonder what gave me that idea. At first, I'd need to make the stem. It would be a staircase, and then I could make the top a big mushroom-shaped room with a loft above that for bedrooms. We'd have a nice view of the island while we hung out in the base, and we could keep an eye out for danger too, and wandered around the main area inside. There's so much room in here. Get it? Mushroom? Much room? You should stick to sniffing and leave jokes to someone else. I can't please everyone. Outside, I created an awning for Geo to stand under and keep watch. Our base was ready for action. On day 36 to 39, I went back to shore to get Geo. Once on land, he and I mined some flowers and some other things for the base and statue. I smelled something familiar. Hey, I smell another Zoglin. I wanted to follow the scent, so we went looking. I had to see if they were okay. I followed my nose to a pillager base. A fire was roasting, and there sat a Zoglin chained up to a log. The pillager was humming and wandering around the yard. We walked up to the hut. Excuse me, but what are you planning to do with that Zoglin? The pillager nearly jumped out of his skin. He hadn't seen us sneaking up on him. Geo, kill pillager. Have at it, Geo. Geo, smash. That pillager didn't stand a chance against Geo. Wow, nice going, Geo. And look, there's an emerald on the ground now. I picked it up and put it in my supplies, then walked over to the Zoglin. Hey, my name is Zozo. I can smell you from miles away. I'm here to rescue you. Thank you. My name is Hogatha. The horned enderman sold me his dinner because I wasn't the Zoglin he was looking for. That's rough. I told Hogatha how to find my base and invited her to meet us up there. She liked that idea. There were voices in the distance. A mob of pillagers came into view. We better get out of here. We don't need that kind of trouble. Yep, time to run. I'll find you later. Good luck. On days 40 to 43, I was back at the base, and Geo and Hagatha had joined us. Hagatha added some grass around the base. It was looking pretty gnarly. I went over to the statue and kept adding to it. Things were coming together for this epic statue, but it wasn't done yet. Do you know what it's going to be? I'll have to keep working on it later. Smithers called me into the base meeting room to finally tell me all about what's been going on with this horned enderman dude. It all began with greed. I could tell a flashback was coming because the music got all dramatic. Flashback. Called it. The Horned Enderman had been taking over the overworld, enslaving and destroying. He seeks to control this world, and the Nether too. Everyone is afraid of him. He summoned the Witches of Fate. He asked them to reveal the location of a weapon called the Black Trident. It was powerful enough to raise up an army of the undead. They didn't tell him the location. We only know it's somewhere in the ocean. They did give him a prophecy of a Zoglin with a powerful enough nose to sniff out the location of this weapon, but they also said that this Zoglin could be his undoing. I believe that Zoglin is you. I know this because I was there. I was part of the Horned Enderman's close advisors, but I couldn't stand by any longer and see him destroying so many lives. I deserted him and went in search for you myself. We can't let him find the Dark Trident. I would never lead him to it. If you can get me home, he won't be able to use me. Fate has brought you here, my boy. You must give in to your destiny, and your destiny is to rise up against the Horned Enderman. I've run into him before. I couldn't defeat him. I have no idea how to do that. I just want to find a cure for my zombie form and go home. You will find a way. This was a lot to take in. I wasn't sure how I felt about it all. Of course I wanted to help, but how? Thanks for telling me all about it. I need to do some thinking outside. I went on a walk around the mushroom field at night to think about everything. The mushrooms were grazing in the field with their babies. Hagatha came and joined me. You okay? Not really. You want to talk about it? I just, I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to fight Enderman at all, let alone an ultimate Enderman bad guy. I know that Endermen don't like water. Maybe Maybe that can help. That is something. I was hoping I could just cure myself and get home. Do you have a family, Hagatha? No. The Horned Enderman took them all. It's just me now. I'm sorry to hear that. I guess he really does need to be stopped. We sat and looked at the ocean. It was so peaceful to watch the waves and smell the mushroom aroma. Hey, do you see that light out there? I could make out a small roof on the mainland. There was purple smoke coming from the chimney, just like I had seen when I teleported here. Maybe it was where the witches lived. Maybe they could help me. I decided to go investigate in the morning. On day 44 to 49, I got into my boat and set sail across to the hut. It didn't take too long to find it in the daylight. The purple smoke smelled just like when I teleported. This had to be the witch's cottage. I made my way up the stairs. I knocked and there was some scuffling around inside, and then the door opened and a wand was shoved into my face. Who are you and what do you want? I'm looking for the witches of fate. Is this their cottage? Of course it's not. This is my cottage. Who are you? I am Flim Flam, the mediocre wizard. So don't try any funny business or I'll turn you into a mediocre newt. Did you by chance cast a spell recently that could teleport someone from the nether to the overworld? How did you know that? Bless my soul, my spell did work. You're the Zoglin I summoned, and then promptly lost. I think you better explain some things to me. The mediocre wizard let me into his hut. He had all sorts of magical looking items. He then suddenly shot his wand at the wall. I turned around and saw a call to action. An action to subscribe, that is. Which you should do. And also search for more of my videos. Zozo. Z-O-Z-O. -O. Anyway, Mr. Mediocre, you were explaining something? So you see, I knew I needed to get to you before the horned Enderman did. I admit that although I've been 
practicing magic for a long time, well, I mess up a lot. So I found this spell to get you over here, but then I wasn't sure if it worked because you never showed up. It worked, but you dropped me into a random place in the overworld. I wish you wouldn't have done that. I used to be a handsome hogland. Now look at me. Oh my, yes, I can see what you mean. But you know, there's a cure for that. There is? Of course. I know it takes a golden carrot and something else. I can't remember off the top of my head. And if you got me here, you can get me back home, right? Of course, but I brought you here for a reason. We need to find the Dark Trident before the Horned Enderman does. If I help defeat him, can you cure me and send me home? You got yourself a deal. I was so glad I was finally getting answers. All this excitement really tuckered me out. I asked the wizard if I could sleep off some of my exhaustion. He was cool with it. On days 50 to 53, I looked around the wizard's hut and saw so many magic potions and wands. I see you are admiring my collection of magical objects. I like your wizard hat, too. Oh, yes, this hat is awesome. I can use potions and they last forever. Maybe one day you can get a wizard hat of your own once you've learned some things. So do you have a plan for how to defeat the Horned Enderman? Of course, you. And that was as far as I got. Hmm, I bet some of your wands and potions will come in handy. Can I try one of your wands? The wizard agreed and selected a nice wand. I was pretty excited and I ran to the water to test it out. Abraca free stuff. I froze the water into ice cubes. I definitely like this idea of learning magic. I think you should come with me and meet our other friends. We have a mushroom base across the way. We can all make a plan. Can I take this wand with me? The wizard agreed, got in his own boat, and we sailed off. As we sailed across, we noticed something splashing on the surface. We got closer and saw it was a mermaid surrounded by a shark. Looks like it's a good time to use that wand, Zozo. I jumped out of my boat and jumped on the rock the mermaid was on and excitedly took out the wand and started pointing it at the water around the shark. The water was turned into ice and the sharks were frozen in ice cubes. You sharks need to cool it. Are you okay, mermaid? The mermaid came closer to me. Thank you for helping me out. That was a close one. Who are you guys? My name is Zozo and this is Flim Flam the wizard. We are just some friends who are trying to stop the horned enderman. You probably don't know who that is, huh? Actually, yeah, I do. Those sharks work for him. They were trying to get me to tell them where the Dark Trident is. What? Are you serious? That's why they want me too. We were just meeting up on the Mushroom Island to make a plan on how to stop him. How about I follow you over there? I can team up with you. That's a great idea. Follow us. We were assembling a pretty epic team. On days 54 to 57, we sailed up to the Mushroom Island. I told the mermaid to wait at the shore and walked up to the base. I introduced Flim Flam to the group. Smithers and Flim Flam were both suspicious of each other at first, but after some explaining, they both realized they were on the same side. I took some time to break away Away from the group and work some more on my statue. I added some good red coloring to it. I was halfway there. It made my way back to the base and then I heard splashing in the water. I almost forgot about the mermaid. I went and spoke with her at the beach. Her name was Dolphine, but she went by Dolly. Dolly told me about why the sharks were after her. She knew of a portal called the Whirlpool of Want. They wanted the location. This whirlpool takes you to the Witches of Fate. I didn't think you could get to them. That's what they want you to think. What if you take us to this whirlpool? Maybe we can ask the witches if there's a weapon that can destroy the Dark Trident. Dolly agreed to this plan and I went and let the team know where I was going. Before we left, I did what I could to make sure my health and weapons were ship -shape. I was ready to follow the mermaid to the Whirlpool of Want. On days 58 to 62, we were out in the middle of the ocean when the mermaid pointed ahead. There it is. Just sail straight into it. You sure this will work? I didn't want to get stuck at the bottom of this whirlpool. Besides, I hardly knew this mermaid. This could be a trick. Pretty sure. Here, let me go in ahead of you. Let me see what happens. She swam right into the whirlpool and it swallowed her up. I waited for a few minutes. The whirlpool started to gurgle and out popped the mermaid. There she blows. Well, it looked like like it worked. Onward. I jumped off the ship and into the whirlpool. The whirlpool had a portal at the bottom and it spat me out onto dry land. I was in the end. And what do we have here? A wayward soul. A voice cackled from the sky. It seemed to come from all around me. You seek how to destroy the dark trident. We know everything about all of you, but we don't do things out of the kindness of our hearts. We are witches. <laughs> we make trades. What did you bring? To trade. I panicked. I didn't know I needed to trade something. Three witches appeared in front of me. Well, what will it be? If you want the Wand of Weather, you will have to give us something that interests us. Wand of Weather? This wand will destroy the Dark Trident? You bet your little zoggling britches. I offered them my wand, my swords, my potions, anything I could think of that seemed really neat. But they didn't want any of it. They already had piles of that stuff. Hmm, I wonder if they would take something that only has sentimental value. I offered them the poppy that Geo had given me. A poppy? You've got yourself a deal. Poof, they disappeared, and in their place was a wand. We forgot to mention one little thing. Only a true heroic act can activate this wand. <laughs>
Their voices trailed off. A heroic act? I do those things all the time. That doesn't seem too difficult. I wanted to stick around to sniff around, but suddenly there was a whole mob of zombies headed my way. I ran for the portal and jumped through. On day 63 to 66, I was ejected out of the whirlpool. I told Dolly about everything and then sailed back to our base. There was smoke on the horizon. We got close to the island and saw our base had been attacked. The horned Enderman must have discovered our base. I jumped out of my boat and made my way to my base entrance where I saw Smithers. I found out that they had kidnapped Hagatha. They thought she was me. No, Hagatha, I will rescue you. I will fly fast and try to find her. You need to continue on your quest. If you can defeat the horned Enderman, Hagatha will be spared. I wanted to go with Smithers, but I knew he was right. Smithers would take good care of the situation. He quickly flew away. I was going crazy with worry, so I had to distract myself. Those henchmen had really done a lot of damage. We had so many repairs to make. There was only one way to handle this situation. A rebuilding montage. We upgraded a lot of things and then got started building a moat around the base. Flim Flam suggested that we add a water path for Dolly to be able to swim in and out, so we added that too. Afterwards, I stepped back and admired our work. It's amazing what you can do when you're motivated. Just then, I wondered if my statue had been destroyed. I ran over to the field, and luckily it was just how I left it. I finished off the face. Can you tell what it is? I guess it's pretty obvious now, but I still needed to add the piece de resistance later. On day 67 to 70, I tried out the wand of weather, but couldn't get it to do anything. Maybe it only worked around the trident. We had better locate the trident to try and destroy it. I hoped it would work for me. Flim Flam appeared behind me and said, Zozo, you're the one with the magical nose. Where do you think we should go to find the trident? I closed my eyes and I sniffed the air, focusing on where it could be. All I smell is Hagatha. I'm worried about her. I'm right here, silly. Hagatha and Smithers were back. Smithers had found her wandering back to the island. They had let her go after realizing she was the wrong Zoglin, but Hagatha was certain they were tracking her. We can use that to our advantage. We can have Hagatha stay here as a decoy while you sneak off to get the trident. I didn't like the idea of potentially putting Hagatha in harm's way, but she insisted on the plan. Everyone else would stay at the base to protect Hagatha. Meanwhile, Dolly and I would go on our quest. I got on my boat and followed the faint scent of the dark trident. We eventually came into a desert with cactus and pyramids on the shore. Dolly pointed out that there were ancient ruins in the water. Perfect spot to find a trident. And I can tell we are close. Just then, my ship started to shake. What was that? I looked over the edge. Dolly, there's a lot of angry noodles wiggling around the water. I don't think that's a noodle, Zozo. I think it's a giant octopus. Yikes, we would have to think fast. I shot arrows at it, but that just made it more mad. It hit my boat and busted it. Oh no, he even managed to hit me a few times. He really packed a punch. I would have to swim my way out of this. I'll use my siren song to lure it away. You head for a cove to hide. What about you? I'll be fine. I can outswim these guys. Dolly started singing and the octopus was put in a trance-like state and started following Dolly. Meanwhile, I booked it for the shoreline. I saw a cove that had a very strong smell coming from it. I knew I was hot on the trident trail. Dolly was nowhere to be seen though. I hoped she was okay. The cove wasn't empty though. A pirate ship was there as well. Where there is pirates, there is treasure. I looked around and sure enough, I found not one, but two treasure chests. What does this one have? Whoa, it's a Respiration 3 helmet. Now that's convenient. I opened the other one up and it had a heart potion. I moved topside and took it and got 10 more hearts and I grew into a large size Zoglin. Now we're talking. I was ready for some underwater exploration, but Dolly hadn't showed up yet. Well, I hope she can find me. On day 71 to 74, I started to swim through the shallow waters of the cove that led to a watery underground cave. It was very dark. I noticed some obsidian floating around in the cave and picked it up for later. The dark trident had to be around me somewhere. The scent was so strong, I could also smell trouble. I dove under the water to have a look around, but it was so dark. Suddenly, someone grabbed my hooves. Ah! Oh, oh my goodness. It was just Dolly. She had found me. You scared the ham right out of me. I'm glad you're okay, though. She held out her hand. <laughs> Sorry, Zozo. Look at this. This is a glowstone. It will help light our path. Awesome. It was so nice having Dolly to help me. She set the glowstone on the floor of the cave, and we could see a little opening. We swam through it. It led into a big space with large wall ruins. There were lots of tall vines growing all over the ruin. Hey, look! The dark trident was just sitting on top of a mound of sand. Just then, out popped hordes of drowns. I didn't come this far to be beaten by a bunch of water zombie punks. You're going down. We fought with all our might and wits. We had to win. There were many, but we were mighty. Sure enough, we were able to take care of all of them. Hi, Finn, Dolly. We gathered around the trident. I got out my weather wand, and nothing. Nothing happened. Happened. We had just defeated all these drowns. That was super heroic. Shouldn't that heroic act have activated the trident? What are those witches lying? I don't know. Well, grab it and let's go. We can try to destroy it some more back at the base. I was hesitant, but I agreed. Now that you have obsidian, you can build a portal back home. Really? That will be awesome. Although, I'm still a Zoglin. We need a cure so I can fit back in at home. I like you as a Zoglin. I think you look cool. Thanks, Dolly. I just don't know what my family will think. Suddenly, everything started to shake. I reached and grabbed the trident. We had to get out of here. We swam back through the hole in the cavern wall and back up to the surface, and then back to the mouth of the cove. Everything was crumbling. We barely made it out in time. On day 75 to 78, I sailed back to our base. I thanked 
Dolly for all of her help, and she told me she needed to return to her kingdom before her family started to worry. I'll never forget you, Dolphine. At the mushroom base, I peeked through the window and saw my friends had finished my statue for me while I was gone. It looked great. It was a mushroom with a pumpkin on top to remember Burr by. You guys are the best. After that, we all gathered around the trident. I needed to destroy this thing quickly. I tried the wand again. Nothing. I've done so many heroic things. Why wasn't it working? I pointed it at the sky and thought about my awesome friends and how brave they always were. This time it jiggled a little. A few clouds came out and made it rain a tiny bit. Well, that was something. You'll get the hang of this in time, Zozo. I believe in you. I was so distracted by the wand that it took me a while to notice the strong odor of evil floating into the base. The horned enderman had to be near. I picked up the trident, started sniffing around, and went into my base. On day 79 to 84, I looked outside our window. A bunch of endermen surrounded our base gate, and there was the horned enderman standing there. You have got to be kidding me. Little Zog, little Zog, let me in, or I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your base in. That dude is terrifying, even when he speaks in rhymes. I'm going to start building that portal, and maybe we can take the trident to the nether. You escape with the trident. I'll fight them off. Smithers ran out of the room. I built and lit the nether portal. You can't do this alone. Agatha joined him to fend off the base. I thought to myself, and decided not to run. I had to be a hero if I wanted this wand to work. I told Flim Flam to guard the trident. I pulled my sword out and ran out as well. After fighting for a bit, I swapped my sword out for the bow and started shooting. With each arrow I fired, the Enderman teleported away. But suddenly, they charged me, and I took a big hit. Ouch! I started swinging my sword, and I did my best to take them all out. At long last, all of the Endermen were defeated. Where was the horned Enderman, though? I noticed he wasn't around. I looked up into the mushroom base windows, and there he was. He was in the room with Flim Flam and the Trident. Oh no! Smithers! The Trident! Smithers flew up where they were. By the time I got there, Flim Flam had been injured, and Smithers was facing off with the horned Enderman. With ease, the horned Enderman grabbed the Trident and teleported out of the base. Smithers followed him outside, and I did too. The Dark Trident can only work with a heart of pure evil. Watch as I turn this thing lethal. With that, the horned Enderman hit Smithers with the dark trident. No, how could he? I pulled out the wand of weather and pointed it at the trident. Storm clouds gathered and it started to rain pretty hard, but it didn't seem to do anything to the trident. The rain did, however, scare off the horned Enderman since he teleported away. With the enemy gone, I ran to Smithers' side. This is the end for me. Promise me you'll stop him. Then Smithers disintegrated, leaving behind a nether star. I was so sad and picked up the nether star. I placed it down at the entrance of the house. It would forever shine bright on us, as Smithers did. On days 85 to 89, Hogatha and I went through the portal to the nether. We knew time was short. The horned enderman would be marching through with his undead army at any moment. We landed in the crimson forest. Welcome to my homeland. Wow, everything is so hot and spicy looking here. Home sweet and spicy home. I miss the smell of lava. We started to walk around a bit when suddenly a mob of piglins was coming toward us. Well, looks like it's never a dull moment. Let's kick some hams. We used our arrows, swords, and strength to take down the mob. We continued exploring the nether for a bit until we got to the edge of a cliff. The lava was hot below us. I carefully laid down dirt to get across. I noticed more piglins coming at us, so I broke off a brick of the block bridge so they couldn't follow us. Well, that was a very lava hot welcome. Where's your family? They aren't far. I can smell them. On days 90 to 94, I heard some low oinking. It was my family. They were munching on fungi, as usual. Hey, you guys, I'm back. Who the oink are you? Oh, great. It was Bebop, the bully. It's me, Zozo. I look a little different now. I'm bigger and... And freakish looking. You're not one of us anymore. I just returned from the overworld, so I got zombified. But I'm still Zozo. And these are my friends. We have come to warn you. Warn us about what? Are you threatening us? You think you could just disappear one day and then come back and act all tough? That's it. No one threatens us. No, I'm not threatening. Bebop came charging at me. I put my head down and got ready to return his blow. I hit Bebop a lot and he simply backed off. I'm bigger and stronger than you now, Bebop. Time to stop picking on others, or I'm gonna have to teach you another lesson. I told the rest of the Hogland family what I'd been up to and where I went. These are my friends. They've been helping me. You see, we got a weapon that can stop this evil dude from coming here and destroying everything. He's known as the Horned Enderman. Bebop must not have learned his lesson because he butted in. We will never believe you. You're just a bunch of freaks. I'd much rather be a freak than a boring old piece of bacon. I pity you. You can't see past your own snotty snout. I used to worry about what you all would think of me as a Zoglin, but now now, I don't care. I'm proud of who I am on the inside and out. My friends taught me that. You can either show respect for me and my friends, or you and I can settle this again. For good. Hog to Zog. I pulled out my wand of weather. It was suddenly glowing and surging with energy. I had been heroic by standing up for myself and my friends, even against my own kind. I was done being ashamed of what I looked like. I loved my zombie self. I held the wand into the air and created rain in the
the nether. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I won't pick on you or anyone else. Please make it stop. I put the wand away and the crazy weather stopped. It was all the proof the hoglins needed. On days 95 to 98, we decided we would make a big hill with a fortress on top so we could have the high ground. Flim Flam also came over from the overworld and insisted on making me wear his wizard's hat. It would keep my health up even after being attacked. Our hill fortress was looking pretty cool and we were able to recruit some other nether mobs. We got mobs of piglins and wither skeletons. We set up inside the fort. It was then that the sky opened a portal and out poured all sorts of undeads. Drowned necromancers, skeletons, zombies, zombified piglins, and husks. Fight hard and stay safe. We just need to stay alive long enough until I can attack the trident. The zoglins attacked with their tusks to punt them away into the lava. The mutant piglins used their quality swords to cut them down. The mutant husks smashed with their fists. We were all fighting hard, but still, some of our allies didn't survive. Oh, I needed to find the horned endermen. The longer this went on, the more deaths there would be. The hordes of undead just kept coming too. But we fought with all of our might. After defeating some of the undead creatures, the piglin commander gave me a health potion. I drank it and my hearts leveled up. I got 20 hearts and then I became even bigger. I couldn't lie, I looked pretty intimidating. After that, we returned to the fort. On day 99, I heard something happen at the portal again and ran out. The horned endermen finally emerged from the portal. Horned endermen, you are going down. <laughs> what are you going to do? Sprinkle me with water? Oh no, how will I ever survive such hullabaloo? Ha, see my mighty undead army. This world is doomed. There is no way to disarm me. Go ahead and laugh, but this, this is for Smithers. He threw the trident at me, breaking my armor. He was terribly powerful. Thank you for bringing me this trident. I think this is a death well spent. I heard my friends shout and they came to my side. For Smithers! Their chant brought me strength. I shot the wand into the air. For Smithers! It started to rain. Thunder boomed loudly, and there was a mighty zap. A powerful bolt of lightning struck the trident. The horned enderman exploded and the trident shattered. We did it, just like that. The wand had worked. We all cheered and celebrated. On day 100, after we had finished celebrating and honoring those who had fallen, I had to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my Zoglin years. I said goodbye to my family and promised to come home every Sunday for Crimson and dinner. I would be the Zoglin wizard of the newly named Smither Island. But in the meantime, I would study more magic and defend the weak, always keeping a balance to good and evil. And most of all, I'd spread heroic courage, a love for others and oneself, freakish looks and all. I knew Smithers would be proud. On day one, I spawned in as Nemo. I'm so small, I better be careful. I also noticed I only had three hearts. This was going to be really difficult. Nemo! Huh? I looked behind me and saw my dad, Marlin. He was swimming out of a small cave towards me. You need to get inside. It's not safe. I hurried inside just as a scuba diver appeared. He took his net and snatched my dad. Dad! I tried to swim toward him, but he yelled back at me. No, stay inside. I'll be okay. I promise. The scuba diver swam away, leaving me all alone. I felt really sad, but it was getting dark. I needed to stay safe in the cave and wait until morning to go looking for my dad. On day two, I woke up to the sun shining into the cave. I looked around. Dad? Then I remembered what had happened to him. I got really sad again. I'll find you, Dad. I promise. I swam out of the cave to find materials to build some weapons. I managed to make a crafting table, which helped me to craft a pickaxe and sword. Now I feel more ready if that scuba diver comes back. I continued swimming in the reef and discovered that there weren't a lot of other fish around. Hey! Get down here! Huh? I looked down and saw a shrimp waving at me. I swam down to him. What do you think you are doing? The reef isn't safe, especially closer to the surface. Not since the human has been coming around. Yeah, I saw him yesterday. He trapped my dad. I'm sorry. Do you have anyone else to look out for you? No, I'm alone. I could tell the shrimp felt bad for me. He scurried back into his hole and returned with some kelp. Here, take this. You need it more than me. Thank you. I swam carefully back to my cave with the food. I'm going to protect everyone. They all seem too scared and someone needs to stick up for them. I arrived at my cave, a plan starting to form in my mind. On day three, I gathered some more sand and even managed to find some gravel. I started to make a little base for myself around my cave. I wanted to make a dome so that the humans couldn't get in. I got part of the foundation done, but I needed to do some other things to get the dome figured out. All of a sudden, I was smacked from behind. I looked and noticed an eel. Hey, get away! I used my new weapon to smack him back. He got me down to one heart, but I finally managed to defeat him. You messed with the wrong fish. I felt my strength grow, and I leveled up into a larger fish. 
Hey, I have six hearts now. Yes. Neat. I also noticed that I could swim faster since my fins were bigger. Wow. I decided to call it a day. I was beat. On days four to five, I gathered some more materials to build the base. I managed to build a furnace and smelted some sand to make some glass for the dome. I was swimming around when I noticed some bigger fish trying to trap some colorful fish. I swam up to attack the large fish. Hey, get away from them! The colorful fish scattered and the large fish attacked. I managed to get a bunch of hits in and managed to defeat all the fish. Hey! Huh? I looked down and saw a fish lying on a rock. It was one of the ones I had hit with my sword. I guess he had tried to swim away. I swam down to him. What were you doing to those fish? We work for the scuba diver. He guarantees us food if we help him capture fish. That's awful. It's life. We need food to live. He tried to smack me again, but I managed to get a hit in. He yelled, and then he disappeared. How sad. How could he betray his own kind? I swam back to the base, contemplating what I had just heard. On days six to eight, I crafted some more glass for the dome. It was starting to look really awesome. I also used some of the materials to make myself a better sword and tools. If that scuba diver comes, I'll be ready for him. I went venturing out, being careful to avoid the surface. I came across a large mound of sand and began to gather it when I was hit by something. I turned and saw a jellyfish. He was ready to strike again. Nobody wants you here. I smacked him and before I knew it, he was gone. That was super easy with my new sword. I was feeling good. The reef was just a little safer already. On days nine to 10, I went venturing a little further. I managed to gather some more supplies when suddenly I heard some screaming. I swam toward the sound and saw a blue fish being grabbed by the scuba diver. Leave her alone! I drew my sword and managed to hit the scuba diver's hand. He let go of the blue fish who swam away. If I can't have her, then I'll have you. The scuba diver grabbed at me and almost managed to get me. I was fast, but he was faster. I swam away, knowing that it was my only chance to get out of this situation. I hid inside the cavity of a rock. The scuba diver retreated, and I let out some bubbles in relief. That was close. I didn't realize that the bluefish had swam into the same cavity in the rock as me. I swam out in surprise. Thanks for saving me. I don't know what I would have done without you. Of course, I'm here to try to protect the reef. I invited the blue fish back to the base where it would be safe for her. She happily agreed. I'm Dory, by the way. Nice to meet you. On days 11 to 12, I helped Dory to make a little home for herself. She seemed to really like it. I even said it reminded her of her old home. Where is your home? Actually, I don't remember. She was an odd one, but I liked her. I went out to gather some better materials in a nearby cave, but then a group of eels attacked me. Ah, get away from me! They were too strong, so I went to a different cave. I was swimming around for a while, but then I saw some iron. Yes. That's exactly what I need. I mined out as much as I could before heading back to the base. I made myself an iron sword, pickaxe, and some armor. This'll show them. I went back to the cave with the eels, and I attacked. In no time, they were all gone. Take that. I went into the cave and sure enough, there was more iron. Cool, this'll set me up for a while. I went back to the base and made some more tools. With those, I made some minor improvements to the base. It was starting to look really good. On days 13 to 15, I went out to learn more about this scuba diver. I needed to find my dad and all the other fish he was taking. I swam around the reef to gather more information. More fish were out today, but not a lot. Hey, do you know where the scuba diver is taking the fish he's capturing? Everyone kept swimming away from me. Huh, I wonder why everyone is so skittish. I finally happened upon an older snail who was willing to talk to me. Everything was peaceful in the reef for a long time. Then one day, a large shadow was cast over us. We looked up and saw a monstrous machine churning in the water. It's called a boat. Boat? I said the word. It sounded weird to me. The scuba diver can't stay underwater like us, so he drives the boat. At first, he was just here to take pictures. Then one day, he started snatching fish in bags, or even shooting them with his harpoon. He is a bad man. I was grateful that someone was willing to talk to me, but now I was terrified. The scuba diver sounded really strong and capable. 
I was just a little fish. What could I do? On days 16 to 19, I woke up and couldn't find Dory anywhere. I hope she didn't swim off on her own. I went outside the base and saw Jacques waving at me again. You better hurry. The octopus just took your friend. Huh? Dory? Yes. She was swimming up near the surface and singing to herself. An octopus came by and grabbed her before she even knew what was happening. Jacques pointed me in the direction of the octopus lair and I took off. The octopus lair was more of a sandy hill covered with seaweed, but it was something. I hurried and swam inside to save my friend. Hey, it's you! I looked and saw Dory. She was with another fish who looked pretty beaten up. Watch out! I turned and saw the octopus try to attack me. I hurried and drew my sword before he could get a hit in. He tried to maneuver around me, but I was able to get some really good hits in. Before I knew it, he was gone. Just then, I leveled up into an even stronger clownfish. I felt my fins grow and I swam around to test them out. I was super fast now. I could create a wall of bubbles. I'm so happy you found me. Also, this is Gil. The other fish swam up to me. Thank you for saving my life. That was really impressive. Thanks. I am happy to protect the fish in the reef. We need it more than ever, especially with this scuba diver around. Are you going to fight him? I'm not sure. He's so strong and way bigger than me. I know of an item that could help. Huh? It was lost in the sea a long time ago, but it might be the answer to your problem. That was the best news I had gotten all day. Maybe there was a way to fight the scuba diver after all. I want to hear all about it, but you should stay at our base. It'll be safer there. Gil happily agreed to come with us and we headed back to our home. On days 20 to 22, we arrived back at the base, but it was being attacked by skeletons? Ah, oh, gross. I went at them with my sword and fought them off easily. They all dropped a bunch of bones. Maybe they would come in handy later. I was happy that Gil was staying with us too, but I wanted everyone to know that this was a safe place to stay. A statue would be a good idea. I came up with an idea, but I needed to gather some supplies first. I gathered a lot of kelp and even managed to find some sea cucumbers. Yes. Perfect. I knew I needed more for later, so I planted a few and then used the bones from the skeletons to make some bone meal. I fed the bone meal to the sea cucumbers. I won't be running out of those anytime soon. I went to work on the base of the statue. Can you tell what it's going to be? And if you like swimming along on our adventures, be sure to watch more of my videos by searching for Zozo. That's Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. And subscribe too, since we sure would love to see you around here more often. On days 23 to 26, some skeletons attacked again. I wasn't too nervous though. They were easy to defeat. They dropped more bones, but I noticed that another one dropped some sea lanterns. Wow. This would be perfect to make the dome more bright. They were looking really good. I started to place them around the base and inside the dome. It was looking brighter already. I was outside looking for some more materials when a yellow fish swam up to me. Hello, someone told me that this is a safe place to stay. My family was taken by the scuba diver and I don't have a home to go back to. I knew exactly how this fish felt. Please come in, you are more than welcome to stay here. The fish told me his name was Bubbles as we went inside. I started on making some better houses for Bubbles and Gil. They weren't anything fancy, but they were safe. I made sure to smelt some more glass so that we could expand the dome out. It was looking really great. On days 27 to 31, I went to chat with Gil. I wanted to know more about the item he had told me about earlier. My grandfather told me about an old wise turtle that was a protector of the reef a long time ago. But like now, humans kept invading, stealing fish away, and polluting the ocean. The turtle decided to go to Poseidon to bargain for an item that would protect them. In return, he crafted the turtle a special trident. Poseidon? No way! I know, right? Anyway, the old turtle takes this special trident, but Poseidon says it will only work for those who have pure intentions to protect the creatures of the sea. Makes sense. It gave the turtle the ability to call the lightning down and control the water. Wow! But the best part was the last gift it granted to the wielder. The ability to walk on land like a human if needed. Wow. That's amazing! So, where is the trident now? That's the tricky part. After the turtle passed on, so many fish and creatures wanted the trident for themselves. They fought over it. Because of their greed, it was broken into three pieces and scattered across the ocean. There are rumors as to where they are, but nobody has been able to find all of them. 
This was a lot to take in. Hmm. My grandfather told me he had heard of one that was guarded by a shark near a shipwreck. It wasn't a lot to go on, but it was a start. I started out toward the shipwreck that Gil was talking about, though I was a little nervous about the shark. As I approached, I didn't see any shark. Then he came out from behind the hull of the ship. He's pretty big. I was nervous, but I knew I had a job to do. So I charged at the shark and attacked. He was taken aback and tried to get a hit in. He was a good fighter, but I wasn't doing too bad myself. After a minute, I could tell he was really struggling. I was about to make my final attack when he swam away. Huh, okay. I wasn't expecting that. I went and looked around the ship, but it was empty. I was a little confused. I wonder where the trident piece could be. On days 32 to 35, I swam out of the ship, but I heard someone calling me. I looked down and saw some crabs hiding under some coral. I swam down to them. Hey, are you looking for the trident piece? Yeah, how did you know? We've seen a lot of fish come this way. Not nearly as brave as you. Most have retreated, but this isn't the ship you're looking for. So I gathered. All of a sudden, the crab shrieked and scurried away. I looked behind me and saw the scuba diver. You're not getting me today. Then he took out a harpoon and shot me. It paralyzed me and I sank to the bottom of the ocean. Oh no. I struggled but couldn't get out. Then I saw one of the crabs crawl out of the sand and give me a milk bottle, which cleared the paralysis effect. Go! I swam toward the scuba diver, creating a wall of bubbles so he couldn't see me. He dropped something and I hurried to grab it before racing back to the crabs. Hurry, you can come with me. The crabs rushed out of their hole and together we hurried towards the base. On days 36 to 39, we arrived back at the base. I realized that I had picked up a flashlight. Maybe it would come in handy later. I started on a little house for the crabs to live in. They were super grateful that I had helped them. Hey, the ship you're looking for is sunken into the depths of the drop-off. At least that's what we've heard. This was great news. Except it's guarded by a huge monster. Nobody has been able to get into the ship. Okay, less great news. But I needed to do some things before I left. I worked on the statue for a little while, planting new sea cucumbers as I went. It was starting to look a little more like what I wanted. On days 40 to 43, Gil told us that his friend Flo needed help. We invited her into the dome and heard her out. My friend Peach, she's a lobster. She was taken by some eels. Huh? They had been terrorizing her for food, but when she couldn't give them any more, they kidnapped her. I can help her. Just tell me where I need to go. Flo directed me to a small sunken statue that the eels like to hang around. She's probably there. Please go help her. I promised I would, and I headed out. I made sure to be stealthy as I went along. After a while, I saw the statue Flo had told me about. It looked like a human, holding some sort of bowl. Sure enough, there were a bunch of eels and a colorful lobster sitting in the bowl. I charged. Hey, you give her back! The eels reared up and went to attack. There were a lot of them, and they were getting hits in. I barely managed it, but soon after, they were all gone. Thanks for saving me, mister. No problem. I'm a friend of Flo's. Oh, thank goodness. I noticed a small hole in the base of the statue and looked inside. There was a chest full of prismarine crystals and one shaped prismarine. Wow. Nice. I headed out with Beach back to our base. Once we arrived, Flo was super happy to see her friend. They thanked me and then I went right to making Peach a little home. I then made something for Flo as well. Then I took the prismarine crystals I had found and smelted them into shaped prismarine. Then I used that to make some new prismarine weapons and armor. Sweet, now I'm ready to take on that monster. On days 44 to 49, I swam to the drop off and looked down. It sure was dark down there. Oh wait, I have a flashlight. I took out the flashlight I had grabbed from the scuba diver and turned it on. It worked. I started to swim down into the depths. I was swimming for a long time when I finally started to see a ship. Then I saw something moving toward me. It was a goblin shark. Nope, not today. I took out my sword and braced myself. The goblin shark attacked, but I created my wall of bubbles, distracting it. I hurried and swam into the ship, turning off my flashlight. It was pitch black. Hey, is someone there? Huh? A voice was whispering from the corner. I didn't dare turn my flashlight on yet. I'm a friend. I'm looking for the missing trident piece. Is that what this is? I thought it was just a fancy stick, but I did manage to grab it. 
I snuck past the goblin shark to get in, but I haven't been able to get out. Why are you down here? I'm a treasure hunter. I heard there was some stuff down here, but nobody mentioned the shark. I'll get us out of here, don't you worry. Just follow the sound of my voice. Then, when I say swim, you swim. Okay. I found an opening and I turned on the flashlight. Swim! We swam up as fast as we could. The other fish behind me kept whispering to himself. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. After what seemed like forever, we finally got up past the drop-off. I finally looked at the other fish. I bloat. He was a puffer fish, wow. and he seemed really tired. He was also holding what I assumed was part of the trident. Here, take this. Huh? I don't want it. He gave me the pole piece, and I studied it. It looked like it had carvings on it. Hey, thanks for saving me, by the way. That was gnarly. Of course. How about we get back to my base so you can rest? Sounds good to me. And with that, we headed back to the base. On days 50 to 53, I helped Bloat get comfortable at the base, and then I headed back out to look for some more pieces of the trident. Someone had to know something. On my way out and about, I saw a huge crater in the sea bottom. There were sharks swimming all around, including the one from the first shipwreck I had gone to. It looked like they had someone trapped in a cage of some sort. Hey, you let them go! I raced down with my improved swimming abilities and attacked the first shark. I was able to take him out and then went to attack his friends. After just a few moments, I was able to fend them all off. I went up to the cage and noticed another shark inside. Ah! I went to swim away, but he called out to me. Hey, wait! Don't leave me! I won't eat you! I swam back to him, a bit apprehensively. You don't eat fish? Huh? No! Fish are friends, not food! Oh, that's nice to hear. I unlocked the cage and let the small shark out. Thank you. All those other sharks were making fun of me and decided it would be hilarious if they put me in a cage. I'm so sorry they did that to you. He nodded. What brings you all the way out here? I told him all about the scuba diver and the legendary trident I was trying to put together again. I showed him part of the trident I had. The shark got excited. Say, I have something that looks like that. The shark, whose name I learned was Bruce, swam a little further into the crater. There was a little alcove that held a small chest. I opened it, and sure enough, there was a piece of the trident. Yes. Whoa, thanks! No problem. The sharks found that here, but they figured it was some sort of fancy stick. But we kept it anyway. I tried to put the pieces together, but nothing happened. I would probably need all of the pieces before it would meld back together. I invited Bruce back to the base. We might need to expand it a little bit, since you are bigger than most of the other fish living there. I'll be sure to help out. We headed back to the base, ready to make some big renovations. On days 54 to 57, Bruce and I arrived back at the base. At first, everyone was a little scared of Bruce, but after a while, they all started to warm up to him. They even helped me make some improvements for him. We built another dome attached to the main dome. This way, people could have more space for themselves. I also made myself a little chest to store the trident pieces in. I didn't want to carry them all the time and risk someone stealing them from me while I was outside the dome. I was about to make some more improvements to the base when Dory swam right up next to me. Hello, could I get your help with something? Sure, Dory. What is it? Oh, I just forgot. She swam away for a little bit, then came back a moment later. I remember. Could you help me find some purple shells? Huh? Purple shells? Yes, it's very important. It was an odd request, but I decided to help her. We ventured out together and found a dozen or so shells in varying sizes. We went back to the base, and I gave Dory the shells I had found. What are they for? You'll see. She left for a while, and I thought she had completely forgotten about the shells. It wasn't until later that she swam back up to me. I have something for you. She held out a necklace made of some purple shells. Oh wow, thanks Dory. I put it on. I actually felt happier. You're a good friend. Dory hugged me and then swam away. What a cute friend. On days 58 to 62, I gathered some more supplies for the statue. Flo and Gil even helped me with gathering and building some parts of it. It was looking really nice. We were heading back inside the dome when we noticed that there were some of the scuba divers' minion fish attacking the base. Get away, you traitors! I smacked them with my sword. I swam around and noticed that everyone was there except Bloat. I looked in his house and noticed a note. Huh? 
It was from the scuba diver, telling him to look for the legendary item at the ship and to infiltrate my base. Uh -oh. Bloat was a traitor! I hurried and went to the chest near my cave, and just as I had suspected, the trident pieces were gone. I went back to the base and told everyone that Bloat stole the trident pieces. Everyone saw how upset I was and started to all talk at the same time. It was a little too much for me, so I went into my cave to think. What am I going to do now? I looked at Bloat's note again and noticed something on the back. There was a map with a location circled. This must be where he's going next. I've got to stop him before it's too late. On days 63 to 66, I traveled to the location on the map. It was a rock formation with all kinds of coral growing on it. Then a fish emerged from the coral. He had blended right in. Get away from here! We don't want any more trouble! He tried to bat at me with his fins, but I backed up. Trouble? I'm here to stop all the trouble. The fish looked at me again. I'm looking for the third trident piece. I was led here with a map. Do you know where it is? Yeah, I do. But some other fish came by a little while ago asking the same question. In fact, some of them said they would be back. Just then, I saw the minion fish swimming up to us. I drew my sword. Stop bothering these innocent fish. I charged and attacked. Before long, they were all gone. That was impressive. I swam back to the camouflage fish. Here, I think you need this after that fight. Huh? He handed me a burger and said it was a Krabby Patty, whatever that was. Thanks, so can you tell me where the trident piece is? It's hiding in the lair of the large glow squid. It's basically impossible to get to, but that puffer fish and his goons might have a chance. That must have been bloat. The fish told me exactly where the lair was, and I swam as fast as my fins would go. On days 67 to 70, I made it to the lair of the large glow squid. It was an old underwater temple. Outside of it were some minion fish. They looked like they were guarding it. Then I saw bloat and a few more minion fish emerge from the large cave. I charged at them. You traitor, I thought you were my friend. Bloat saw me and got scared. He tried to hide behind the minion fish, but I easily took a few of them out. Bloat tried to swim away, but I smacked him with my sword. He looked at me angrily, and then he puffed up. I felt a sharp pain in my side, and then I blacked out. On day 71 to 74, I woke up. I felt really sick, and there was a pain in my side. I looked and saw one of Bloat's needles lodged in between my stripes. I pulled it out and groaned. Ouch! I knew I needed to check the lair, so I swam down and saw an alcove with a chest. It was empty. Bloat must have gotten the item before I blacked out. I didn't have much strength, so I ate some kelp. I felt so sick and knew I needed to get back to the base to rest up. I made the long journey home, wondering what my next move would be. On days 75 to 78, I made it back to the base and rested for a little while. Once I was feeling more like myself, I made some improvements to the base. I added to the domes and made some lights. I also started on a new dome in case we had more fish arrive. I was about to clean out Bloat's little alcove when I heard a weird noise outside the dome. I went out to see and it was Bloat. What are you doing here? I was trying to sneak back in to get some of my things. Get out of my way. You traitor, you aren't welcome here. I lunged at Bloat, making a wall of bubbles to distract him. Then I slashed at him with my sword. I wasn't going to let him knock me out again. He was very disoriented, and before long, I took him out. Then, just like before, I felt my strength surge, and I leveled up into an adult clownfish. I now had 15 hearts. Yeah, I'm unstoppable! I looked up and noticed that Bloat had dropped something. Huh? I was hoping that it was part of the trident, but it looked like a paper. Hmm. He must have already given the trident pieces to the scuba diver. I looked closer at the paper and realized it was a map of where the scuba diver docked his boat. Oh. It looked like it was on a schedule and switched every couple of days. This is good information. Yes. I also checked out Bloat's alcove, and sure enough, I found some good stuff, like refined prismarine ingots and some healing potions. This is just what I need. I felt bad about Bloat, but ultimately, he had made his choice. Hopefully now, it would be easier to defeat the scuba diver. On days 79 to 84, I traveled to the next location where the scuba diver's boat was supposed to be. I looked around the seaweed field and there was no boat. Huh, I wonder where it could be. Hmm. I waited it out for a little while, but then I noticed a little movement in the seaweed. I drew my sword in preparation, but then a little sea turtle popped out. Whoa, don't hurt me. I'm not going to hurt you. 
I'm looking for the boat that's supposed to be here right now. Oh, uh, yeah. That usually leaves here in the early morning, so you're late. Okay, well, I guess I should go track him down. Wait, could you help me first? Something fell out of the boat when the scuba diver left. I've been tracking him ever since he stole my dad. I think that it might be important. I felt sorry for this little guy. So many fish and sea creatures were suffering, just because the scuba diver was selfish. Of course I'll help. We looked through the seaweed for a little longer before I saw something partially buried in the sand. Hey, I found it! The little sea turtle swam over to me and we looked at the paper. It was a map, just like mine, with the boat docking locations, but there had been a change. Huh? The boat was heading for one other stop, and then, my reef! He'll be there in just a few days. Uh -oh. I need to go back and warn everyone. I invited the little turtle to come along with me. I learned his name was Squirt. Thanks for helping me. No problem. We'll get your dad back, Squirt. We made our way out of the seaweed and back to the base. On days 85 to 89, Squirt and I were about to reach the base when Jacques waved me over. I swam up to him. I heard you needed some help. From who? It doesn't matter. I just hear these things. You need a way to get on the boat, right? Until I can find the trident, yeah. Jacques went into his hole and then pulled out some sort of helmet. Huh? This could hold you while you're out on the ship. Wow, this is actually really helpful, Jacques. Thanks. He seemed really pleased with himself, and I invited him to live at the base again. He finally agreed. He had a lot of stuff hidden in his hole, but after a few trips, he was settled in. To thank me for helping him move in, he gave me a smithing table and some paintings. It was good to have friends. On days 90 to 94, I made some upgrades. I went to work smithing my prismarine sword using the refined prismarine ingots I had found in Bloat's things. It made my sword much stronger. Wow. I also reforged my armor. Wow, this is amazing. Too bad Bloat had to be a traitor. He would have made a good team. I also worked on some more improvements around the base. The domes were looking awesome. Hopefully it would be safe enough from the scuba diver and whatever his plans might be. On days 95 to 97, we finally finished the statue. It looked amazing and I was super proud of all my friends for helping me out. I was admiring the statue when Squirt swam up to me. That kind of looks like my dad. That's so cool. I love sea turtles. I always wanted to meet one and now I have. Sweet, dude. Totally. It was a nice little moment. On day 98, I made my final preparations to get to the boat. Squirt volunteered to lead me to the scuba diver's boat. It'll be awesome, dude. Just leave it to me. I gave the map to Squirt and we made our final preparations. Hey, before we go kick some scuba diver bum, be sure to subscribe. We want you to see the cool stuff we'll do next. And with that, we headed toward the surface. On day 99, we swam up toward the boat together. There were some minion fish along the way, but with my new sword, we took them out easily. We made it to the back of the boat, and I threw down the item Jacques gave me, which turned into a fish mech suit. Wow. I swam into the head, which was built like a fishbowl, letting me breathe even when outside of the water. I got on the boat with Squirt, and we looked around. The boat was pretty big. It might take some time before we find our families. We looked around the lower deck, and then went up the stairs to the upper deck. There were some fish tanks up there. Dad! I saw him immediately, his orange scales shimmering among the other fish. Hey, I told you to stay safe down below. No, Dad, I'm done hiding. The reef needs protecting, and I'm going to be the one to do it. He seemed taken aback, but then he smiled at me. I'm so proud of you. And with that, I broke the fish tanks, scooping the fish into buckets I found and throwing them back into the ocean. Hey, Squirt! Huh? I looked and saw a larger tank with a sea turtle. Dad! I broke that tank as well, letting Squirt's dad out. Rad, man. Thanks for the assist. Of course, Mr... Crush, man. Crush. Crush and Squirt thanked me and jumped overboard with the rest of the fish. I saw my dad looking at me from the water's surface. Look out! I turned around and saw some seagulls. They were trying to grab me out of the fishbowl. On day 100, I fought off the seagulls. They kept screeching at me, but I didn't care. I needed to find the trident. I maneuvered around the seagulls, and after a few hits, the rest of them flew away scared. How oh, pathetic. We turned and saw the scuba diver, no longer in his gear. But he had the trident in his hands. Uh -oh. He had managed to put it together. It's time for you to leave the reef. Not a chance. 
The scuba diver ran at me, ready to strike. I aimed for his hand that was holding the trident and hit him with my sword. He dropped the trident and I rushed toward it on the floor. All of a sudden, I felt an amazing power flow through my body. The suit powered up and grew in size. I felt so much stronger and faster. No! The scuba diver ran away toward a room. He shut the door behind him. Coward, come out and fight me. I thought he was trying to get away, but then I heard a loud noise. He broke open the door, revealing himself in an even bigger diving suit. He had one hand that shot harpoons, and the other was some sort of electric fist. The scuba diver was scary, but I wasn't going to let that stop me. This ends here. I charged, and so did the scuba diver. We exchanged a lot of blows with our weapons, but then I decided to have some fun. I urged the water to create a giant wave that rocked the boat. I also summoned the lightning to come down from the sky, striking the diver. He was looking pretty rough, and I wasn't making it easy for him. You're just a fish. I'm a human. You will never defeat me. I channeled the power of the storm into the trident before throwing it at him one last time, summoning a huge bolt of lightning. The sky boomed with thunder, and there was a huge flash of light. When it subsided, I saw that the diver was gone. I had defeated him. Yeah! I raised the trident in triumph before swimming back down to the base. Everyone cheered as they saw me. The reef was finally safe, and I was back with my dad. Everything was back to the way it should be.